It's not a sailing tash. Yeah, it is. It's a Charles Manson tash. <laughs> Charles Manson. Should I tell you? Charles Manson. Charles uh, Bronson. You f- yeah, he's Charles, Charles Manson's Manson. the killer that killed everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Please keep this in if it's got an F1 camera at least. Charles going. Manson. <laughs> so, uh, he Char- killed all the, he killed Natalie <laughs> Tate. Well, there's another nutter in it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Charles Bronson. Charles, Charles. What he said, Charles oh, Bronson? No, boy, you haven't got to my head that yet. <laughs> I've only had half a beer. No. After interviewing Crazy Mr. Fish, if you've not seen it, I laughed all the way through it. Just be sat, sat in the waiting room with Stan Was. It's going to be one of those kind of episodes. Oh, I'm <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what one of those episodes is, but whatever it is. Steve, BT Part 2, he was in Japan's strictest prison. It, it was up last year. It's got over 100,000 views already. So we're going to be going over more stories from Steve's life, crime stories, and was stories. <laughs> <laughs> There's no crime here, just shits and giggles. <laughs> Would you like, so people who've watched the previous podcast are aware of who you yeah. are, Steve, and they're going to be wondering who was is, if, if, if was or you would like to introduce was. Well, was has been best mate from kids. And uh, the, so the original idea was we got a basic 20 questions, and at the tail end of it, it was like how... I landed in Wandsworth and Wars came to see me and to, to really show how bad I actually I did get and uh, coming off the volume and this and that, his side to it. Literally within 10 minutes of banter outside. I'm going to say that's not what he we've, said. We've, we've kind of gone, <laughs> let's just get you on from the beginning. Let's more. I no. met you when I was 15 at bus stop at Billington, weren't it? Mm. <laughs> Not a gay thing or out like that. It weren't out like that. <laughs> it's where we used to meet, weren't it? Do you know the first time I met him, he was doing this rap. And he did it. <laughs> and he just thought, who the fuck is this? Can you, can you do the rap? Can you do the rap? <laughs> yeah, come on. Come on. Which rap was it? I was into uh, rap at the time and all that. It was that Grandmaster look. Fash and the Furious. Fire. Yeah. But what did that be? It was uh, the jungle one. Oh. Jungle. I'm in a jungle. Oh, broken glass yeah. everywhere. People pissing on the stage, you know, you just don't care. I can't take right? We're not doing that. We're like a fucking holy <laughs> yeah. anyway. Come on, everybody, sing along. <laughs> so that was my introduction to Woz and Who the fuck's this? I like him. No, you didn't. You didn't like me at first. No, I really thought. You fucking no. said after that, I fucking thought you were a right knob. <laughs> Well, not as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. No, no. So he was busting out American raps at a bus stop in Blackpool. No, uh, Billington Ooh. near us. Billington. A little village near us. Billington. Billing, bu- we were the Billington bus stop boys. Billington. I'm glad yeah, you didn't yeah. get that wrong. Yeah. That could have ended really. Where the hell is Billington? Near <laughs> Wally, near Clitheroe, near Blackburn. It's the Blackburn. Cam- Blackburn. 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 It's the council estate area of the posh area, which is Wally. Right. Wally's is quite a posh. Yeah. And it's we, just a small we, we live in the council estate up the road. Yeah. So you guys have got your own YouTube channel now. Yep. We yeah, yeah. What is the theme? This. <laughs> yeah. shits and giggles. It's all shits and giggles for someone giggles and shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> we, uh, a, few, <laughs> a, few, a few weeks ago, a mate of mine says, I'm going to sell up, we're going to buy a boat, me and you, we're going to learn to sail, and we're going to fuck off around the world, and uh, we're going to make a YouTube channel. And, uh, Not a smuggling boat. No smuggling. I did say, can we go to Columbia? Can we go to Columbia? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be millionaires. I guarantee it'll end up something fucking dodgy. I absolutely <laughs> guarantee that. No, no, it was here. He always stops me. He's always... Yeah, but I'm not fucking going, am I? That's what's interesting about this story is Steve only gets busted when Woz isn't around. He's the sensible one. Yeah. I'm the one that says... He actually genuinely is. <laughs> do, you know, do you know the one? devil and the fucking angel like that? Well, there's about 14 of his own devils on this show. That's why I'm going to have a loud voice. And there's me going, don't be a fucking knob. No, it's right. They're really fucking good. Yeah, you won't be telling him to whisper, will you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and not to whisper, sorry. Oh, fucking hell. So before we get to your visit in, in, in prison then, what was it like you two growing up then? Oh, well, it was a good laugh, weren't it? We uh, really good fucking because we were in bands together. You see, we, we, we literally started playing the uh, everything in yeah. bands together. American rap, 
No, 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 no. Heavy, no, heavy roll. roll. We were all heavy metal warriors. Yeah. We didn't know what we were at the time. Crash bang war. First, we were at the, the torture Crash as your father. Yeah, the torture <laughs> <Were they>? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say that, Mr. Fish. Shout out to Mr. Fish. Yeah, yeah. We love you. I would love to have Mr. Fish and him on. Yeah. Oh, my really God. Good. You three. <laughs> yeah. The room would have just explode. That's fucking yeah. Is that his real last name? No, Mr. Fish. No. Is that, right, right. <laughs> That's killed just like a children's character. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, yeah, so he's go on, you met, you met at the bus stop, and then what kind of activity did you partake in? <laughs> well, do you remember when we first got our first musical instruments? We might not be able to say that, will we? Yeah, right, so he's not as innocent as you think. He's a thieving <laughs> bastard. He's a thieving bastard. He dragged me. Of well, all was... the things that I've never been a thief of, I've been the violent one. He's the thieving git. No, I'm fucking not. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I found out about me, you went and did it. Mm. We got, there was a, right. a, a certain place, like a school nearby, yeah. and uh, I've just got a guitar and uh, I needed an amp. So I spied this fucking uh, amp in the music room. Look at him, he's looking around now. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and I thought, oh, I know, I'll get this fucking, I'll get this amp. So I got in it and, I, no, this is only a little tiny thing, isn't it? And uh, so I thought, I'll get in and at night, I went across, din, 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 and they had a skylight on. So I took all the lead off, lifted the skylight off, and I got my granddad's axle, and I sawed through these fucking little boys. And then, check this out, right, when he's fucking 15, Took my shoes off so I wouldn't leave any footprints and then dropped down. Always out, thinking. And pushed it all up like this, swept all my mess up, got back up, put the bars back, put everything back. Fucking there, got me on amp. So he wanted to be a drummer. And he said, Is there a drum kit? I said, Yeah, yeah, there's a drum kit there. So what did Steve do? Just fucking smashed his way through everything and broke everything. <laughs> oh, and fucking made a right mess. No tact, no finesse. Fuck all. Stay. Right, I'm calling bullshit on this. You fucking, you didn't do the clear job that I did. <laughs> I, I remember me and my mate Burnsy, we had good stuff. I think we did. What, I can't remember which school we did first. Anyway, we, we, we basically broke into the school in that same way, carefully through, nick this drum kit. We're both drummers, aren't we? Then we realised, wait a minute. We need to, we can't, we'll have one drum kit for one week or we do another school. So we broke into his school. So there's two schools. And I remember like when we finally done it, the old legging across the road and the cymbals drop in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> See, I went across the school field like a shadow. And the, uh, like the, the caretaker, gone. the caretaker, <laughs> the caretaker lived a few doors down from me, didn't he? Do you remember? When yeah, Jack England, yeah, yeah. So I had to like, uh, I couldn't play the drums for ages because obviously like, uh, which bass has nicked the drum next minute? <laughs> two, two doors down. So Worst uh, thing were as well, you must have had that. When you were a kid, we used to, we always go into the school running across the road. And, uh, but we're never thieves, though. No, no, that's no. The that's the only thing I've ever done. As soon as you did it, you always wanted a shit. No matter what it were. You get in there and you were starting and you go, I need a shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and you always go in there, I need a fucking shit. <laughs> So you were there, and then me, me and Arnie were doing it one time next to each other. Death charge! Listen to were <laughs> at school. We went oh, to right. we went to school one time. Oh, no, we used to break in the school a lot, <laughs> drinking pork and all that stuff. This yeah. was your own school. This was set. Saint Augustine didn't believe that. School name. Well, please bleep that out. Well, I never expected to go down this this route. It's a little look into our into our history, Steve. Surprise, surprise. So that was. We just seen Silla Black. The last time, the last time we were in Liverpool, I shagged Silla Black statue. Yeah. yeah, I asked about how you shag a little black statue. Fucking... We actually played at the cavern, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. We were trying about to work 15 out. minutes, yeah. about 25 minutes. It was a lot of bullshit. Yeah, yeah. It was like 20 bands all on the same time. Like the old, uh, sell your tickets to play at the cavern. We're all, oh, yeah, yeah. Does everyone want to play at the cavern? Yeah. And we all like got a coach lord all got here. Like, we can only do like three songs because we've multiplied that with everybody in this area. And that was the first time, like, for sh water was like a pound for water. Yeah, Remember fucking that? were, weren't you? Yeah. A quid for a bottle what? of water. I said, can I just have a glass of water? We're proper skint and all that. We had to drive by. <laughs> have a glass of water? Yeah, quid. Fuck off. Ten euros in Ibiza. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's 
it went got all silly out all that shit. Fucking all the rave scenes and uh yeah like back when you I used to you never went to it, did you? But the uh <laughs> No, I didn't do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I wasn't into bar. I, I went to it just for the birds and stuff, but it was always like it was brilliant going to the bar in them days. Like, I was only I didn't do any drugs or anything like that, but I was like, So uh, Blackburn, you must have been coming down to Manchester raves and stuff, were you? No, you no, because I weren't a raver. No, but no. I used to go to the raves for the birds and that. Right, we used to go black. So we were always playing bands a lot. Yeah, then, we? this was the same kind of time when we were rock and rollers yeah. going to about out controllers, yeah. weren't we? <laughs> yeah. Right. All but, right. So we've, we've we've covered your early criminality then. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when you guys like. So you, you you were just mates from the bus stop or mates in school? Did you go to the same no, school? No, no. Well, well, no, he left. No, I just left school. Yeah, yeah. Ah. And I moved to that place. He's considerably <laughs> older than me. Right. One year older. <laughs> one fucking 18 months. <laughs> 18 months. Fucking one year. Um, so it wasn't yeah. a school friendship, because like when school ends then... Sometimes the friendships, people go in different life yeah, directions. Yeah. It was the other, yeah, it was the opposite to that, yeah. Your, your life directions came together after well, you, you just finished YTS, school. weren't you? You were on YTS? I'd... You were at college, Blackman College, our, our you? Mate, I just moved... My mum and dad had just lost the business, lost everything, like, yeah. it was proper bad shit. We were literally to the point of... Uh, they had nowhere to deliver anything, so they put us in a council house in this area. And so I was a Blackburn lad, really, moved to this new council area. Um, Southport originally, not it? Yeah, originally from Southport. But uh, when we moved to Blackburn, a quick a quick story of it. We moved to Blackburn. Mum and Dad really did really well in the pub, the Balaclava Hotel. Um, did really well. And then eventually they sold the business to go into the shop. Um, all happily ever after. Um, get retired. They made it. They got absolutely scammed by these so-and-sos. Lost everything they worked for all their lives. You know, this is what, one of the big reasons why I literally don't give a fuck about money and the, and what it brings and what all that shit. I learned it from a very early age how what a load of bollocks it is. Because when we moved to there with nothing, I ended up like meeting my, with my wife and my best mates and I realised that money is a load of shit and just really enjoyed I mean, mum and dad enjoyed it. I all think the, it's all a the, fucking good crash all, all the stress of them. <laughs> they had no more money worries. That's like what you do with it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I've so a lot of money. A bit of reflexology. If we have a chance against Ray Good, then now. I'll have all fucking money and you can have a, you know, like a bit of straw. But anyway, yeah. You could be a mad uh, monk in a cave whispering yeah, to yourself. Yeah. Voices in your head. Old MacDonald had one. Old MacDonald had one. <laughs> of so you guys joined the formed a band yeah just when we learned to play how, how old were you when you formed the band well, I'm 16 15 yeah the first band was the tortured subjects we? <laughs> <laughs> the tortured subjects you couldn't even fucking play yeah I mean first thing we do doing we know I do with Batman and Robin I'm fucking <laughs> Yeah, listen to the cardboard box with some wooden spoons. Yeah. yeah get, he he wants to be the drummer, didn't you? Yeah, originally, yeah, yeah. It was like a bit of a... Well, I think we did a coin, coin like toss that, yeah. for it. Who were your influences back then? Were you watching oh. Top of the Pops? No, oh, no. I, 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 was, I was a big punk. punk. You were a punk, weren't you? He was into punk. all that. Uh, so this is Grand the Master 70s Flash's then, like the Sex Pistols? No, no, stores. no. This is a... Uh, 84, 85, okay. Yeah, 85. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'll 80, 80, 85. Yeah. I left school. I left school in 85. Yeah. So that, that following year, really. Yeah, yeah. Then were all that. We were all into rock and stuff. He was a bit like that because Steve Shaw beat punk stuff and everything. So I'd, you know, yeah, I was more into the punk. Yeah. Yeah. Stranglers, the Buzzcocks. In, uh, excuse me. In, in the pub I was in, they had all the bands used to practice. <laughs> what was that words. badge you used to have on your court? Was it I'm Pathetic? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm pathetic. <laughs> you always like that. <laughs> I don't even know where I got it from. Yeah, so I, you know, I wasn't a full on punk, like dressed with all the, but I was, yeah, it was, so I, it was I loved so, it. I loved so it was the, pretty dark then, the output. No, not no, really. We no, would say it was dark. No. Tortured souls, existential. No, that, that tortured. That, no, that's no. It was just a completely wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was just Scott no. Bone gave us that name. It was just yeah, a funny name. It was shit name. It wasn't. It was shit name. I would have put it took us mm. to the top, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what we, that's why we didn't make it there because we didn't pick that name. <laughs> what, what, was, what was the first song that you really liked that you did? Oh, oh, oh. What was we wrote? Because we used to love yeah. writing songs. We, well, that's we what were, we did. We didn't really. We started off it doing great, you know. I really miss them days when we used to be in the in the practice room like this writing yeah. songs. And yeah. By me and him, as best mates we are. Fuck me, we can have a row. Oh, fuck you know, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. You can be your best mates though. That's the like, thing. You, you know, know that people don't see it. They go, you, you think, fucking. Yeah, hell, yeah. They're gonna kick off. Any yeah, second. yeah. But, you know, we've never had a fact. We've never. never, uh, never yeah. Yeah. 
Over in a professional uh, boxing competition we once had that I won. Yeah! Like, well, let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get, so how did, how did you get discovered? Discovered? Well, well, we never fucking made it, did we? <laughs> 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 I don't for a living. No, well, we did get discovered by uh, Fergal Shark. Oh, we? yeah, Battle of the Bands, weren't we? We did, actually. We were very close. This is where we nearly made it, it, it kind of finished it. Yeah, we won. Uh, no, we didn't even win. It was a Battle of the Bands competition. Oh, we didn't even win it, did we? No, no but no. Fergal Shark, who was one of the judges, and I was like the kind of managerish kind of thing, or more the go more gobby than him sometimes, <laughs> or more confident in like talking to people. So I've I've, I've got Pally with uh, Mr. Fergal Sharky, and I've got, I said, uh, you know, what do you think? Like, even though we didn't want it, he showed me his. He went ten out of ten, everything. He said, listen, so I'm going to get you guys a record deal with uh, Polydor. Like, fuck off, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like shit. And, and uh, you had it somewhere, didn't you? Like a centre spread of how he was going to put a million pound into us. That's we, right. Yeah, we're going to come yeah, out yeah. this international. Oh Lord, we really thought we fucking made it. Believe me, that was it, weren't it? Yeah. And kind of when it all failed, that's when it. How did you just, fuck it? Why lied? did it fail? Uh, we were too heavy for them. Yeah. Polydor were massive. Yeah. They were like Diana Ross shit and all that. But you know what he did? Just a bunch Do you know what he of, fucking yeah. did, wasn't he? He fucking lied. He says, Was, we've got a record deal. I said, What are you on about? He says, I've got a letter here now from fucking Polydor. Fuck off. Really? Was, get her now. I, I, we used to have a thing, right? Swearing your mother's lie. Because we're always used to lie to each other. This was the right. Polydor one, was it? Yeah. And fucking. Uh, so if he said swear in your mother's life, that rate, you couldn't fucking, you know, go past that. I swear in your mother's life, I swear in your mother's life, I've got a letter here from Polydor. So I got me dad, dad, give us a lift door, like, and everything like that. Dad's give us a lift door, tell him we got a record deal. <laughs> fucking gets in there. He jacked his job in. <laughs> no! Oh, 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 no, no, that was later on. Oh, 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 that was a different one. That's when we got that manager. Oh, yeah. So I get so to his house. Right, let's have a look then. So I runs in like fucking, and he's, there's letter over there. So I pick fucking letter up and I'm, I'm looking at letter from Paul Yeah, uh, and I'm sorry to say it's a pass. Like, what? What do you mean it's a pass? And he's stood there behind the kitchen fucking on that breaks and we are now going, fuck off, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> are you fucking wanking? I knew it was mad. It wasn't Polydor. Did you know? It wasn't Polydor. Who was it? Because Polydor was, I used to ring uh, Fergal Sharky every Wednesday. They, they had a meeting on a Tuesday. The Wednesday was the big... Hey, all right, are we going to be millionaires? Oh, I don't know yet, but it, it, Irish. And why did you go gay voice in? It, it, was, <laughs> it was easy. It was the Fergus. Yeah, Fergus, Fergus Shaggy voice. It's early in order. It's early Biggity, biggity, biggity bongs, all it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he said, eventually said, uh, no, he said that it was bits too heavy, which is what, what we were dreading. They had a band called The Almighty, you remember at the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were the only heavy British band uh, anyway, and they weren't even that heavy. We were more like metallic kind of Yeah, because the other one was when we got a manager because you got stuck with your car for a fucking... You did get a manager at one point. Yeah, we had oh, this... No, straight away. Oh, the first gig we ever had, we got a manager. He's like that, this uh, Big Chris, were not Big it? Chris! Back, uh, right, lads, what do you drink? We're going, what do you mean, what do you drink? Uh... You know, for the the rider for the oh, I'm like, oh, I drink my. We never talk like that. It's not doing like that. Like that. I'm pretending. <laughs> I'm doing a. I'm doing a pretend naive. Oh, fucking, sorry. Yeah. You put a pin in the car, Mister. Fucking all out there. I don't know. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. I was trying. I'll suck you off if you get a record deal. Fucking. Yeah. Where did all that come from? Cool, cool. Right, let's start this whole thing again. So, so then I said, fuck him. It's all right. Oh, blimey. I'll fax you, don't I? That's a funny one. How do you just go on to Oliver then? Yeah. Somehow oh. he's connected that to Oliver. Yeah, I go a bit like that at times. My insides have gone, man. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But yeah, but you got pulled up with copies for you. had a really shit car, a marina. And you got put, it had no reverse. Like bats the ball, it had, it was sprayed on the top. <laughs> and he had three ball tires. And you were a bricklayer at the time. And he says, Copper says to him, uh, What's your occupation? And he says, Fucking rock star. <laughs> <laughs> I had dreams, aspirations. <laughs> rock star. <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly on. How, how, how long of a run did you have then as a band that didn't make it? I was there, we had a good while at it, didn't we? Yeah. So like we'll just say from into your twenties. From 16, 16 yeah, to yeah. about twenty four, I'd say, weren't it? Because like that. we went to we had, we had a van and everything. We used to go around all over England and yeah. Wales and fucking everything. You know, I'd go yeah. out for three four days a week. You know. Sleeping in a rolled up uh, carpet, yeah, that yeah. hole in the back of the van because he's always had to sit at the front. He had to have the window up because I can't breathe. 
Oh yeah, I'm like that. Yeah, <laughs> fuck, I'm there, fucking. I had to fucking sing. Oh, you had to do it. Sit there playing your drums. Chain smoking, like fucking rolled up in a fucking. Car. Used to be that bad. The Walls, condensation. Show, show the window, please. What the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. I can't. I've got my asper. No, we used to sleep on gear. So then you'd be that that far away from fucking roof at van. Yeah. yeah. So then you're breathing on the cold van. Condensation's dripping on your face. You wish. I was a vocalist, <laughs> darling. And you're falling asleep driving, it's horrible. You've got to get that window down. Oh, fuck oh, it. He was fucking in worse driving at night time when he had his fucking freaky do's. <laughs> Traffic cones. He used to freak him out. <laughs> Be going down. I, said, I could never sleep if he were driving. It, when all the, uh, when it's all going like that, this is why, you know, the volume and all these things are probably not very good for me. That's why I don't do drugs. I've never done drugs like since a very early age. But uh, but for, and some of the effects are if I'm driving down the road, it all starts to go, woo, and I'm going, Whoa. So you went back at van, you were asleep on board, yeah. then he, he was very when you started aware going of it. over at Cat's eyes, you're, no. stay, get back on fucking road. All oh, right, right, right. <laughs> then you thought you started dripping off it again. Stay, get back on the fucking. <laughs> Any crazy after party stories? Oh, fucking hell. What was that one when we were going to smash that TV up in that house? And then he said, no, not this one. I've got one upstairs. Wilkie's house, weren't it? All oh, right, yeah, yeah. They were fucking... He wanted it uh, plugged in, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. We went to this... We've been out piss. And this then... wasn't a band story, though, was it? No, it was just... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, it's the TV out the window hotel scenario, yeah. yeah. That's when I fell asleep, I fell asleep right? Fucking... Because I used to like having a smoking dope and all that, and we'd be here in mixes mm. badly, and then... He didn't yeah. do anything. So we always be the last one That's fucking awake. Idea. Always the last one awake. And then I woke up, I thought this, apparently I'm this two fucking fit lesbians naked and all. <laughs> and uh, I woke up on... <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, by the way. I, w- <laughs> I woke up on couch and I just I was asleep and then I felt this fucking weight. <laughs> what the fuck's on me? And I opened my eyes oh, and they were all black. I couldn't see. And I'm like, what the fuck? And there's this weight on me. Cr- crash bang wallop, word. So I fucking <laughs> pushed it all off and he rolled everything up. He rolled the car, everything in the living room. He rolled it up, everything, and stacked it all on top of me on couches because we were fucking bored. <laughs> I had carpet rolled up, TV on me, fucking tables, fucking everything. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of strange. Did you meet any interesting characters on the road? Uh we must I mean, have met loads of fucking yeah of course loads of um, off hand I can't it's hard to say isn't it uh, uh, off hand yeah alright so you grounded then in your 20s was I, I was, was married then I, I was married at 20 yeah. you married you got was on your shoulder telling you not to get involved in criminality <laughs> Well, he wasn't yeah. really... He right. was just like, How old when tits up? This is Waz's fault as well. How does it all go tits yeah. up? That was my question. Right, so he goes tits up because uh, because of that thing with Paul. And once that collapsed, really, that had kind of gone. At the same time, I broke up with my missus. So I think I must have been 24 or 5. But we done, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So at the same... Literally at the same time... I don't know if you... I don't know if we fully spoke about this after all them years. At the same week or two week, Waz says... Uh, uh, I've got met this girl. I'm going to Australia. That's the end of the band. And all oh that. yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I lost my wife. I've been together since we were 16. I grew up, and then the band and everything. He's fucking off to Australia. Did you? Oh, honestly, I was fucking. Probably Bless you, up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <sorry. laughs> yeah. So yeah, I was. Uh, I was proper good. Like, I lost everything really, and uh, I thought eventually I'm going to. Uh, I don't know. Smuggle drugs for it. No, he didn't. He didn't yeah, eventually the, think that. That's that the thought. I thought, right, was he's really let me down. The wife has let me down. Couldn't you took him with you to Australia? Like, I took wild man. He didn't go to fucking Australia. That's the about two weeks. She fucked him off because he's got a little dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's not literally, it's far away. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you off the rails if was remained in the country? No, no, no. You no, went no. out overseas. Uh, oh, it was a long period between that and when you first went. I ended up joining another band. Uh, there's a ba- fairly famous band called the UK Subs. UK Subs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you in that? No, they asked me to play. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right. 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 A dual queen. Right. 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 UK subs, they were probably, at one point, definitely my favourite band. I absolutely loved them, adored them, and I've been to watch them. And we end up playing with them, doing quite a few gigs. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, our next manager, at one point, said to me, because uh, we, you know, we, I wouldn't say we were that pass up pally, but I was, uh, I used to have a few talks with Charlie Harper, the lead singer. And uh, anyway, got, I think it was Alan Parker that said to me, they want you to play drums for them. They're going to do a tour of uh, South America. And at this point, they were doing football stadiums of like punk rock reunions. This was like in the mid nineties. And I was like, fuck me. I'm literally being asked to join me f- one of my favorite bands as a kid. Wow. Because me mate, I didn't want to ma- let me mate down. I said, no, it's not happening because- You're fucking welcome by the because, way. If I hadn't done that, you wouldn't have got the opportunity. we're on the way to the top. <laughs> and then I, as I was ringing up was, I said, hey, he said, I'm going to Australia with my new bird that I've had for two weeks. That's the end of the band. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I wasn't uh, going to Australia at the uh, time. Uh, excuse me, UK oh, subs. Can, I want to join the band again. <laughs> no, they're fucked off. They're in Brazil. They're in a party. I can't get hold of them. Oh, really? Oh. I didn't know that. Did you know? No, no, I didn't know that. You, Think you, how, how different your life would have been yeah, if, if yeah, what yeah, it yeah. was. Hadn't have See, I don't tell him this. I don't tell him upset him. She went in, she went in Aussie bird. She was from Burnley. <laughs> She was from Clitheroe. Well, I presume she was from Burnley. <laughs> she was that type. She had a... a right. I said, oh, yeah, she had that. I went to knock on her house one day. And there was this little kid. He was about three. And I'm waiting for her to come out. And I says, hey, man, what's your name? And he said, Alan. <laughs> I thought, fucking kids aren't called Alan. You don't get called Alan till you're about 40, do you? You know what I mean? It's like, Alan, you're about that. You're not called Alan. Called Timmy or Robbie, you know what I mean? Fucking Alan. It's like Derek and something like that. You know what I mean? That's an old name, isn't it? That's my dad's name. Oh, sorry. Well, there you go, you see. Ask him when he were called Derek. And his dad was Frederick. <laughs> we had a Derek in the band, didn't we? All right, Derek. Derek will probably watch Hi, Derek. Hi, Derek. All right. <laughs> Yeah, really did me head in that. I thought, a fucking three-year-old called Alan. That don't make sense. Though. Anyway, sorry. Go on, it started to go tits up. Uh, yeah, then you move on, don't you? All them... You move on from was? No, no, we always... we always, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No matter what, we've always uh, we've always stayed close. Well, through one... Well, there were times yeah. I, I went to Nottingham, I joined another band in Nottingham yeah. and said that. But we always used to come back and so meet at, each other. Yeah, and... Based after the... I'm going to Australia and everything happened... I am do like I end up being on a tour with uh, Brian from the UK subs. I did this Euro- That's when I realised this is a lot of fucking bullshit. This music business. We'd gone from kids growing up writing our own music, doing re- not. Uh, I would not say it was absolutely amazing, but we knew it was good. What we had was good, but it didn't really just get there. I went there with like three or four bands touring around Europe. They were fucking shite. And there were, some of them were getting the one of them, I forgot. Um, but you know, like you think, this the music industry is proper, like not who you know. Well, a band, a band you know, performances know. were a lot like this. Do you know what I mean? It were all fucking ruined. It really ain't. Yeah, you, ne- you never knew what you were going to get. Yeah, no, well, what we did. And it was spot- yeah. yeah, it was all that shit. Like, say, so like, uh, he'd break a guitar. I jump up on on the stool with my drums and right anybody can spit in my mouth. <laughs> uh, we'll buy you a beer. And I'll be getting gobbed on for four. Come on, come on! And it was, <laughs> so it wasn't just about the music. Wow. It was like the rock punk kind of. It was a rock music. Yeah, but it, was a, it was a punk yeah. vibe, punk vibe yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. we're very energetic and people used right. to love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. The music wasn't necessarily that good, but we used to show it used to be a fucking good crack. You know. So yeah. Anyway. So <laughs> that was that. So then you started your criminal career? No. No, no. <laughs> I, I never had a cr- criminal career. I never really had a, that insight. Um, that, say, like, growing up, say, with the violent side to it, I used to get in bits of trouble and stuff. Scrapping and, uh, were your main thing, weren't Yeah, it? scrapping yeah. was my... But when I got to the point of where, right, you're going to go to prison here, I kind of went, right, right, I need to knock this on the head. I really don't want to go to fucking prison. Why were you scrapping so much as you have demons? No, no, I was just fucking good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I just... 
I just I kind of liked it. It, it. it wasn't aggressive. Or, you weren't a bully. He was never no, a bully. No, was never any of that. It, I mean, people, it, it, people had always pick on me. They used to I don't know pick how. on you. They yeah. would pick on. Yeah. We would go no, out. Not right. pick on me, but I was just no, no. drawn towards. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's that like that time at Burnley. Do you remember? We were, uh, that fucking what's it called National Front fucking lot coming. We're a gig. Oh, yeah. uh, we're playing. A, a, we're playing a gig in Burnley, and there was other young, bigly younger than us, and he had this black lad playing with him. And uh, these lads came in. We didn't know. We went from Burnley. And all of a sudden, he went really nervous. And proper twitch. He says, you're right, lads. All these look like. And we looked to him and we fucking spotted them. They were dodgy as fuck. Proper looking for trouble. Typical Suicide Squad Burnley. Fucking knobheads they were. Do you know what I mean? Just First thing, they come over I'm to I'm sure the N-word comes up in this story, but don't say it because no. it's YouTube. No, no, no. no, okay. no, okay. no, no, no. National Front. I mean, yeah. I mean them calling <laughs> yeah. the black guy the N-word. No. Yeah. Well, actually, the first thing they did was they oh, came sure. over. Yeah, straight, we sat on still yeah, together, yeah. didn't we? Thought, right, just fucking watch what's going on. Like, and, you know, yeah. keeping an eye on it. Trying not to get into trouble out like that. Straight over to him, fucking push the over on still, right? Fucking anyway, fortunately, fucking land leg the, the came out. Yeah, like, woman, land put your big fucking leg off a fucking stool. Really? Really? Oh, fuck yeah, off! Yeah, yeah. Wow. Big old bird, fucking woman like, and they they fucked off. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know it's not the same lot, but eventually, I ended up being in when I was in Kirkham. There was a few suicide Berlin suicide squad, or a couple of them. I met them. They were in prison, not over that, but that same kind of thing. That's all that lot, isn't it? Okay, now to do with us. No. <laughs> right. Was is going to fuck off with to Australia, but he changes his mind. You end up doing your thing with the UK subs. You'd never become a criminal. You become no. a smuggler. Well, well, this is like years later, isn't it? Because basically, when I got caught smuggling, it was uh, your fag runs how it started, weren't it? No. Yeah. Who were your fag wow. runs when you first started doing anything like that? In what way? Why well, is the that first it? time you were doing something you shouldn't have been, the brawls. <laughs> oh, but that's, that's not that bad. We've all done fag runs, haven't no, we? No, I've no, never done no, a fag run. No, no you <laughs> fucking... You've done a fag run? No, the fuck? That's <laughs> what's fucking wrong with you. I'm sure the vast Although majority... I've got nothing against homosexuals. <laughs> Hang on, that's not right. We're all wrong thing here, aren't we? Cigarette <laughs> runs. <laughs> no, sorry for the Americans. We're talking about, yeah, we're not talking about... Talk, oh, yeah, right, well... <laughs> Yeah, well, but that's yeah, that's how you gently moved into that way, wasn't it? You know what I mean? It started off with that. You met a few characters, and then then you became an investigator, <laughs> <laughs> a private yeah. investigator. Oh, well, I, I went into the private investigation <laughs> game to avoid smuggling drugs. <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> yeah, a bit odd. Yeah, but I did because I was living in Thailand. I wanted to live there, but I didn't want to like go home, so I've bought this uh, cunning plan of being a private investigator <laughs> of uh, catching basically the uh, ladies of the night. Prostitutes. Uh, prostitutes. <laughs> right, so I've seen it happen a lot. The foreigner comes over, goes in the bar scene, falls in love with said prostitute, right? You're going to be the prostitute in this uh, scenario. Can I watch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excuse me, uh, prostitute. We love each other, don't we? Of course we do. <laughs> I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I would never put arsenic in your meals. Right, okay, right, we're fine with that. So, right, uh, as much as we love each other, I have to go back home to earn some money to take care of you. Will you promise to not do anything behind me back? Well, like, will you go back to the in the country and with your mum and dad and uh, you stay out there you won't stay in the bar where you're doing things you shouldn't do I will be 100% faithful oh, no man. need for a chest. you've got to belt. really promise though Sean sure. <laughs> thank god for that <laughs> thing, you know really promise right you can be the prime investigator here so I'm the guy right I love you see you later I'm off back to England I'm going to send you money every month but make sure you don't be doing anything that you shouldn't be doing but let me just as a private investigator here let me just... Hello? Yeah, hello, this is Waz PD. Where you are? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, I've got this girlfriend, I really love her, but she's a prostitute in Thailand. Could you just check up on her while I'm away? Let me just save you a few bucks. She's fucking behind your back. Right, cheers, thank you, <laughs> bye. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, so that was the scenario we was going for. Yeah, yeah, pretty easy work, man. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, as... This was that... This was a... Uh, this was the... So, no, I did the first smuggling, got away with it, did it? That's when I thought... Not fags. No, this was a marijuana. This was when I thought, I'm not fucking doing that again. I really didn't want to do it again. I asked the told what are you doing now? Eh? I told... The first time I did it, I knew 
I didn't think I was ever going to do it again. But I just thought, when I, one time I went home, I thought, I'm going to have to tell this fucker that I've done it. Did because you tell me the first one? No, yeah, you didn't. Yeah, I fucking did. Did you? Because I swore to you I wouldn't do it again. And I See? Did. Best mates, eh? What was, his, what was his reaction when you told him? Oh, give me a right bollocking. <laughs> what I would have done. I can't yeah. remember that, but I no, would have done. Like, I just remember thinking, I'm going to have to tell him. I told you and somebody else. But I did, obviously didn't want everybody knowing. I didn't. It, I didn't want it to be a thing that you know. But I thought I can't. I can't live my life. That's what's so did me head in. He's It'd never like done mass, fucking like drugs. You know what I mean? Lie. Like why are you smuggling drugs? You don't even do fucking drugs. Why do you do it? Because what is it? Oh, he said. I do what he said. <laughs> because I'm uh, Channel Four, not BBC Two. <laughs> You know me, was I'm Channel Four, and not BBC Two. <laughs> Did you really say that? You really said that. Why would you say that? Yeah, I was like, what the fuck has he just said that? Bit of, bit of Brookside. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all the drama. Barry Grant. <laughs> right, I need to go for a piss. Do you want to? Yeah, you go for a piss. We'll yeah. keep it rolling. Yeah, yeah. So was, and we're going to jump ahead. Yeah, yeah. So you end up visiting him in Wandsworth Prison. What year is this? Oh, when were that? Oh, I tell you what, it was because it was his uh, just before his. No, that's when he came back. He did. I got a phone call. There was a rumor going round. Come was back from about, Japan. Yeah, well, there was a rumor going round first. This is uh, when Steve had gone quiet, and he was about. He was on his phone. You're referring to his whispering. No, I'm <laughs> referring to his like fucking nobody had heard from him a little bit, and uh, he was on his. He was around about his fortieth because Swanet lad says, "I've heard Steve's in a nick in China." I'm like, "Is he fuck?" And I thought, he's a fucking nightmare for winding everybody up. He really is. And I thought, he's fucking, well, he's going to turn up. Because I thought, he's uh, December 5th, he's 40 on December 5th. He's going to turn up at my fucking house. Hey, hey, you know what I mean? After all this lot. So I didn't believe anything. And then I got a phone call from Embassy, uh, British Embassy. We're ringing up for Stephen Beatty. He's put your name forward. And I'm like, what's he fucking done? And then they told me, you know what I mean? And then, What did they tell you? Because some people might not have watched the first. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they, well, they told me, you know, he's been caught uh, doing, uh, you know, just smuggling marijuana. and uh, In Japan. In Japan, yeah. And he's, uh, you know, we're going to liaise through him, you know, through uh, from him, through you, for me to tell everybody else type thing, you know. I was like, fucking hell. I really didn't know what the fuck to do, you know what I mean? So, uh, and then when he'd been... See, the, the problem was, this... As he went on in prison, I got a letter from Steve and I was talking to the embassy and Steve, in letters, was really optimistic because there was nothing about the fucking prison in Japan around. You couldn't get any information around. But all that I ever got, I got, there was something what uh, some American guy put in saying, if you're in there, you don't get out early, you do the fucking time. And I was like, fucking five years. But he's on about, in his letters, giving it... Uh, I'm going to be uh, out by, you know, hopefully Christmas or, or something like this, and it? I'm thinking he's not. So I'm talking to the people at the embassy, who was talking to them, and they say, no, no, he's, he won't be out like that. I said, well, somebody needs to fucking tell him because I know what he's like. And he's going to get, he's really positive. He'll get his... Yeah, but that was a Lond your London end, weren't it? The, well, I don't know, you're just embassy. My, you know end, I mean? my end was right. My embassy end, all the information I got was right. He was getting the wrong information. Yeah. Thankfully. But, yeah, but this is it. But I was getting letters off him saying I ought to be on for Christmas. And he ought to be on for this. And I'm getting it off embassy. He won. He'll be doing his fucking five years. You know, we were just saying before, we should brought the letter. I have, I've still not seen this letter. One of the first letters I wrote to him, because I was in the police station, <laughs> I thought, right, I'm going to try and get some code, like secret code in the letter. So I basically wrote gibberish. I thought, he'll work. I said something about, <laughs> uh, what's it called, the... Uh, What's that Da Vinci Code? I said, oh, hi, I was. i just been watching the Da Vinci Code. Well, this is how I'm hearing it. The Da Vinci Code. So the beginning of every sentence... I thought it was, like, his it was like, uh, hi, I was. This is a code. I need you to get hold of such a body. <laughs> so amongst all that, it makes sense. All the rest is gibberish. He said to me, which is, I remember when you, when you when you first got arrested and all that, you'd gone mental, hadn't you? Because I, your letters <laughs> went, no. He says, no, he says, trust me, you went mental. I says, I didn't. I, 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 didn't, I went, he says, no, your letters. I went, no. So you didn't suss, I didn't suss it. He just thought, he's gone fucking nuts, shit. Why would you think they were a fucking cold there? You know, too much Colombo and all that kind of shit. to work it out. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ape dick <laughs> dog shit. You're, what the fuck is he on about? <laughs> so you get the word then that he's been... He's not in China, he's in Japan. I got the fact, yeah, I got the info. And you're in charge of distributing that information then to people? Uh, no, I... The first person I called was my ex-wife. Uh, oh, right, was it not me? No, because no, I had uh, one phone call. Ah, right. And uh, I think it was possibly maybe the only phone number I had in the phone. Because I basically fucked off every... You know, you do... Because I did think I was going to get arrested. You so. don't give me... The, put the embassy on to me then. How do I know that? I don't know. You should have been there, shouldn't you? You hadn't been a naughty boy. So anyway, I know it, it was uh, Donna. She'd uh, passed the word to my sister and friends and all that shit. So I, I obviously, right, on your side to it, I weren't there. <laughs> so what <laughs> So what, was, what did you do next? Plan to break him out of the prison? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Let's all leg it up. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. Modify the van. <laughs> <laughs> no, what a fucking bell end. I was fucking really, I was really mad. I was proper, honestly, God, I was really fucking mad at him. I was proper, like, you fucking knob. Did you, know, did you express that to him? Uh, no, no. You couldn't do, could you? It was. Well, it's a long you way to shout. It was a long way to shout. Yeah, well, by the time he'd done the letter, no, it was, fucking uh, letters. I, I didn't. I, I wrote him a right crap letter. Really shit. I don't remember that. Yeah, I do. I, remember. I, I, I didn't know what to put apart from your fucking knob, your fucking knob, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no, believe me, uh, any letters I got off anybody. You sent me a really good Jimi Hendrix picture. He drew a drawing drawing, of Jimi Hendrix and he had a badge on it that said, was his shit. (laughs) (laughs) Do you like a CND? It's a CND badge and it had was his shit on it. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, and... uh, Do you know I feel a bit bad, actually? Not bad, but uh, I did a drawing for for Wild Man for you. Uh, My eyes are going. It just wasn't right. I just thought, I'm not going to... Over I, there still. Uh, I know, I'm just I'm visualising, <laughs> looking at the drawing. I've literally just bought... I, I will do a drawing for you. Oh, for thanks, well, man, yeah. uh, I'm just going to uh, actually give a beer for him. Uh, when I say give a beer for him, once I've drunk that, I'm going to drink it pretending that it's for him. But this is for well, man, mate. And, uh, oh, I appreciate our, our it. Thank rest you. in peace. Uh, top yeah. one. It's funny how like, your best mate is wild, man, and mine, his real name is wild. Yeah, my last name is wild. Yeah. Yeah. You're wild. Real, we're on wild. <laughs> yeah. We're wild. <laughs> was wild. Was wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You thought it was a, like a made up name when we were in the band. Because wow. I was always known as like damage to a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. But I was wild and damaged in this rock band. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So what then led to you visit him at, at Wandsworth? Well, we got to, obviously... Uh, I, I called him up. once. Also, it was all secret about when I was landing, when I was flying to uh, Wandsworth. And uh, so I had, like, the one phone call. Well, I don't know if it was one, but I just rung him. I said, was, I've landed. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, fucking no way. So long as I'm in Wandsworth yeah, yeah. now. I'm like, fuck oh, off. I said, right, yes, it's right. I'll arrange to come down. And uh, I think... So there must have been, like, the first day... I think did you come down by the second or third day? I can't remember what day. I remember I got uh, I just got you know told work fucking on the day off. I had to go down, went down, drove down to Wandsworth. What's that about four hours? Fucking long way on a piece of shit fucking car that I had. Fuck me, fucking horse would have been better. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then I got I hadn't got a fucking clue. Do you know what I mean? I sat in this room and there were like a load of people, and then you get moved from this other building into like you know this is where you're going in and then we finally went into like a, a, a like a canteen area whatever you know it's like it's like mm. a big old chairs and all oh, the tables and that and they said right sit down here he's coming to the odd numbers each table had a number you sit down here you'll, you'll come and uh, we'll bring him out in a minute you get like a bib don't you like thing yeah and uh so i'm sat there I think you fucking hell. I thought you'd be wanting loads of like stuffed chocolate and stuff. So I went to the canteen bit. I got brews and chocolates and bananas, but all sorts of fucking chocolate shit. Muffin. Yeah, chocolate, chocolate muffins. Muffin. I thought he'd love all that. Going, oh, it was all sweet. And yeah. I wanted to eat it, but it was all like, ugh. And I thought, I thought, yeah, I thought uh, you'll love all that. Anyway, I've just, just got all my stuff. This is the squeakiest fucking chair in history, you know? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll That's not... why we got these new yeah, chairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's all right. I'll just sit over. Change <laughs> Oh, we got a left, perhaps a less squeaky one. I don't, it's, I hope it's not me. Well, yeah, okay, come on, let's do it. <laughs> it might be me. It might be me. Bad. No, it's not you. <laughs> it's a reoccurring thing. <laughs> I'm bigger than you for once. <laughs> not a minute when I get fucking Parkinson chair. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, fucking hell! Don't do things like that. We back to it. Sat around all day. Bloody hell. <laughs> Is that why you were looking through window before? Was it is it in terrible squeaking? 
Yeah, it's bad, isn't it, that one? I, I could see you looking yeah. in, and I thought, this is that chair that he's looking at. <laughs> I saw his head popping around giving it, that fucking chair's awful. <laughs> That's better. Uh, so, yeah, I've been to the, the canteen, and I got him all his chocolates and everything and coffee, and uh, and I turned around, and he was there, he was sat at the table, and fucking hell, you should have seen it, you're like, proper tenkor job. Really fucking thin. His lip was that tight across his gums, you know what I mean? Yeah. He so much. Like, and I just remember I thinking, I remember like thinking, things. fucking thank fuck. If we'd have sat there in front of me, I'd have gone, fucking hell. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? What the fuck happened to you? I can yeah. see it in his face. Yeah, yeah. Fuck me yeah. in his face. Couldn't believe it, what he looked like. I can see him hiding. Really? Yeah, oh, oh, fuck, he'd lost. God. Fuck. I mean, you know, this is how I know smell. It wasn't quite that bad then, were you? Old age and it caught. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, but fucking, yeah, proper tenko. Fucking, like, imagine old, you know, Japanese for Burma and fucking all that lot. Yeah. Totally like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck. Mm. So I fucking went to, and I tried not to. I thought, oh, don't let him fucking see you like that. You know what I mean? So I sat down. He already. Yeah, all right, all right, yeah, you going, yeah, you fucking did. Yeah, but you were really sketchy. Yeah, what sketch, you did that for, you know, but, yeah, yeah, fuck off, you know. Oh, fuck me. Probably sketchy. Whispering? No sketch. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, uh, no, no, no. You were just like, I mean, I'm all right. I, I'm, I'm all right here. Like, yeah. And you were fucking twitchy as fuck. And you were really like, fucking hell. And then, the, fucking, you gotta tell him I gotta see a fucking doctor. I'm like, what are you on about? I've got to get a doctor. I've got to get some fucking this stuff like this Valium stuff and everything. I'm like, fucking straight. We'll sort it out. And he fucking wouldn't fucking shut up about this fucking. I had to tell him. What's not going on about fucking, you know, Valium and shit, like, and everything. And I know, it's weird, like, because, like, we're not seeing each other, but because I was, like... <laughs> he was three, nothing, like, honestly, God, like, he was... three days coming off the shit, and, uh, I don't know, probably four days at that point, I, I felt like he wasn't fully aware of how much I fucking needed to get to see a doctor and, and get this in Valium into me to... Because I could feel it, like, as the adrenaline... It was getting me through a lot of this shit. I'm thinking, what's my best chance here? Because everybody else was ignoring me. All the screws, all... I kept saying, I've not seen a doctor yet. As the, I was being... You know, you're trying to be a bit nice. I don't want to be a bit of a dick, but, you know, excuse me, uh, I, I've not seen a doctor yet. I've been on uh, Valium for two years. And we're like, all right, yeah, well, I'll make sure, will I? And it was just... You know it was being ignored. By the time he's gone now, I'm thinking, right, was Help me, for fuck's sake. When he, Have you got any Valium? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just thought, no, this is one he knows. He knows me, and uh, yeah, but that was always so shocking because I knew so uh, much that see you like that, I was like, "Fuck's happened to you?" Do you know what I mean? You know, it really was. And uh, it probably seemed a bit at the worst point of it, to be honest. Like the a few days in, it was like, and I was new being fucked off, and but also like losing the weight and everything because that, that was the first time I seen myself in a proper full length mirror. I was like, fucking shit. Yeah. It was like a tenko moment, fucking like shit. Really I'm thinking I'm quite physically fit, and I was, well, I was kind of strong, but maybe strong compared to a fucking skeleton fucking army. You know, I was like... Well, you your know, lip is yeah. fucking... Like, when you see somebody like that, his lip was so tight against his gums and his teeth. Yeah, the... Do you know, um, when, do you know when you see the old fucking Auschwitz and all that lot, and how the skulls really protrude yeah. through? We're well, yeah. like that. He was fucking real like that. He was proper shocking. The uh, the guard, <laughs> the, there were two guards that brought me over. And uh, they got me in and everything. It was probably uh, maybe five weeks after I got there. I started eating and put a load of weight on and stuff. And I, this is the point when I realised my money had been fucking uh, gone missing, all my Japanese. And I realised I was lost in the system. Um, I wasn't, like, going anywhere. I was, like, stuck in one's worth. Yeah, you were. Uh, right? yeah, nobody right, knew what. Yeah. Like, uh, anyway, so when I seen this guy, so on, the, on, like, the wings, whatever, there's, like, a, a glass thing there where the officers are, screws, or whatever. And uh, I've gone to, I thought, that's him that brought me over. And I've gone, uh, like, not to the window, I went, hey, you all right? He's gone. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going like, it's Steve. It's Steve. He, he went, uh, fuck me. He went, oh, wait, wait, wait. He came round and uh, she's, oh, my God. I said, I can't believe it. She looks so different. I said, you be, you said you've been going to the gym? And that went, I said, no, I've just been eating. He says, fuck me. He says, you look really bad when we pick you up. I said, you said I looked all right. So we, we say that to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a scene in Papillon, do you know, where he first goes into uh, isolation, seclusion. Yeah. He bobs his head out and there's an old guy who's just about to die. And, he's, and he says to Papillon, he says, 
how how do I look? And Papillon kind of goes, yeah, yeah, you look okay. By like humouring him. Yeah. And the day after, he's died. Like five years later, Papillon, he's sticking his head through the window and there's, and there's a new guy there and he's doing the, how, how do we look? He's going, and I thought, fuck me, that's me. I'm that, I am that five years on, you know, how do I look? And, he, and it must be an automatic that they say to the people, yeah, you look, you're looking really well. I remember them said to me, we all oh, we picked a girl up for her, like two years before, so she was really bad. Uh, she was a right mess, but yeah, you seem okay. But anyway, yeah, five weeks later, he says, oh yeah, you look a right fucking mess. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Do you think so someone like Steve McQueen will play you in the movie? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, for Tom Hardy, to be honest, yeah. So how many times did you visit him? Uh, the ones at Wandsworth, then went right, to Risler. And we decided then. Yeah. That, uh, yeah, that's true. Because yeah. we knew, we both knew at that point that I looked fucking bad and was acting bad and I wasn't myself. So he says, right, we're not going to let any of my sisters uh, or family other members come and see, see me yeah. until I get to the a lot of pies down my next stage. Yeah. And I, said, actually, I said, wait till I... So you remember, it's a few days in. We're told, the guy said, right, you'll be here for a few days, a couple of weeks maybe, then we'll get you moved up to, uh, what was that place you checked it out? Uh, something Hall. Something Hall? Uh, I remember you checking it out. Anyway, I didn't go there anyway. Begin with B, but... but Ber- Berkeley Hall, Bar- Berkeley Hall. I can't remember that. I remember you checking out for me. He said it looks pretty good. Anyway, I never went there. Like I said, I think it was 12 weeks in, maybe 11 weeks, though I eventually moved up into the system to get up north into shitty Risley and that. I mean, I came to see you at Risley. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Quite a few people came to see me in Risley. But I felt at that point, I'm probably, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, a few months in at that point. And I, I kind of went, oh, stop everybody coming to see me and stop doing all the letters and shit. Hopefully, I'm going to get the Cat and D, and I did do. I was so determined to like get this Cat and D thing, and uh, basically, I was on my oh, I was on my way home at that point. I went to Kirkham that way. Yeah, Kirk, like, Kirkham was great that like, the last year. I, I quite, I really enjoyed it. Good. So you're not supposed to enjoy it, Stephen. Were you there when he got released? Yeah, well, I used to pick him up at weekends when he yeah. was at Kirkham. Yeah, he used to get weekends that, so we come back to uh, yeah. over our end, didn't you? And, uh, yeah, I was stopping at my sister's. Was it Friday till um, Sunday? Were it when I pick you up Friday and drop you back off Sunday when I weren't it or something like that? I think it was it? after about eight week in Kirkham you finally got out. Um, out. It's a good system, Kirkham, the the Cat D system, because I felt none of this. Uh, well, I say, you think you don't feel it, but you know there's there's two sides. This is good. This is what one of the, why I wanted to bring was on to give the two sides of all this. You know, you've got the me whatever. But how it affects the family and your friends. Well, that's it. You know, I know what we're, we're joking a lot here, but it is it is obviously it's very uh, the effects that the whole thing is quite it's fucking bad, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> but it is because I mean you know it's, it's on that end. It's all right, you know. It, it, it's not all right, but I mean like like say when I first heard he was in fucking Japanese Nick. I was really fucking, and when I found out what he'd been doing, I was really fucking angry. I was proper like, you fucking knob. Do you know what I mean? We always used to say like, uh, back, uh, uh, but when you go eat Nick and everything like that, you mean, how many, life, how many you know, years have you wasted your life? And I know you, everybody, you, you know, you've got to make the best of what you've got, haven't you? Definitely, you know what I mean? So you say, oh yeah, it weren't so bad and everything like that. But he's still locked up, in it? He's still the other way from everything, from, you know, your family, you know, for, for was, years, still, you know. Don't fully, I don't regret the old experience. I kind of, uh, I made the best of a bad job of the experience. Yeah, but that's what I'm it's, saying. Uh, yeah. Because it was like almost two years in the Japanese prison system and everything, I think it's just enough before you go completely fucking crackers. But also, I, I will massively like to say like, uh, well, I'm doing a podcast on Thursday with uh, Big Sam from uh, the Porridge podcast. That'll be a bit more serious, but about the difference between the systems and how they work. I've got a lot of respect for the Japanese system, <laughs> as harsh as it is. I do honestly believe that if you do break the law and you do fuck up in life, there is a you do need to. Um, you never told the story about that. My favourite story. It's not where I get bummed, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's when when, when they fucking when they told you where to go for your medical. And they told you about fucking. Uh, <laughs> I'm, dreading, to... I'm dreading this. What he's going to come up with? <laughs> well, well, he's told me. Also, I'm looking forward he to says, it. He says they came in. He says I've been told like, well, you know, they've got to go for a medical. You start bullet naked. This is in Japan. Yeah, yeah. 
and he says, uh, and he, sticks to, and he says, oh, this bloke yeah. says, what happens is they'll fucking shout at you, and then you got to pull your foreskin back because it's all in Japanese. Oh, you know, like, foreskin, sir. I've told this one. I've told. No, this you one. fucked it up though. No, it's a different. This is a different one. Oh right, this is a different search. Right, let me just tell you what happened. <laughs> when I first went to Chiba. This is after the police station. <laughs> you go into the real prison, detention centre, really. The old guy was a really nice old guy. And he'd always tell me, right, this is what probably is going to happen. Uh, when you go up from here, when you, you'll get searched and everything, um, you'll, they'll strip you down and you'll do this and it'll be a bit embarrassing, but you have to bend over and open your cheeks. and like, okay. In the police station, they do like a sumo thing. They'd make a joke, they go, hey, do the sumo so you're bollock naked. You'd go, hey, 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 hey. So like, I don't want to drop anything out or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But that's what they do in the police station. Yeah. But they said, so when you get to uh, Chiba, they'll make you bend over and open your cheeks. So I'm going, right, okay, yeah. It is what it is. I'm in this little box and I'm watching. You, you kind of went out of four at a time, these people doing this thing. There's a little gap. So I can see that I can see uh, what they were doing. They're ragging off. And they've got this uh, first time I'm hearing this really dominant... Uh, you fucking do this, stand there, stand there, you, here, here, for you, you, it's all that, you're going, right, here we go, we're in the fucking Japanese prison now, <laughs> so I'm watching all this shit, thinking, and I can see this guy bending over, I thought, right, that's the, the right bit, yeah, I mean, I'm not embarrassed, I'm just thinking, right, okay, I, I do not embarrassed? No, it's all, it's way beyond embarrassment. I'd be fucking no, crying my eyes out. I get that, but <laughs> it, it's way past that, you know what I mean? Because you're in shock of everything else. And yeah, 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 it's yeah. just, it is what it is, you just kind of want to do everything right kind of thing, yeah. so anyway. I'm Imagine do- if you farted. <laughs> <laughs> and a bit of so, poo came out. So anyway, I'm doing all this, eventually I get to do it. Oh no, sorry, just a bit before, this guy that I'd seen come in, and I said to him, he was on the way out. So he was only on like a small crime, something to do with a watch. He did like a two-week thing. So anyway, he was on the way out, but he spent like a week in this Chiba. And that's, that's when I seen the effect of what one week can do to somebody. It was called Roy. So as I'm in this like changing room, I, I seen him and I knew he was going home. Because I knew it was a little thing. I went, hi hey, Roy. Hey. And uh, he's kind of looked at me as if he said, please don't fucking speak to me. Don't fuck it up for me. So I've gone like, hi hey, Roy. He's gone, oh, are you? Fuck it! This is all in Japanese, like, so I don't know what's going on, but I know what's being said. Going, you shut the fuck up! And you, you say no word to him, you're going back in fuck. And I'm always going, oh no, don't say anything. I'm thinking, what the fuck? <laughs> it was really like full on. <laughs> so this Roy's like in a, a state, like, he's going, oh, please don't fuck it up for me, you know. So anyway, so that's happened. Then now I'm back in this box, eventually get out. And then, so you're in there, and they're shouting here, right, you! Clothes off, get your fucking clothes off. So you're all ragged off. Uh, you, you stood there, you go, right, uh, show your hands. Hands like that, front, back. They, and then you kind of go, turn around, turn around. I thought, here we go. It's the fucking asshole bit. Uh, so I've turned around. I'm not going to do it to the camera. But I've basically <laughs> turned around and go, oh, fucking hell, here we go. And I'm, so I've done that. He's going, no, no, no. He's going, you shoot your feet. Show, show your feet. I'm he going, wanted to look what? at his feet. He just wants to look at my feet. There was no asshole fucking bit. So, <laughs> what are you doing to me? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine him, he's fucking giving it. Turn around, I want to look at your feet. Yeah, Imagine yeah. turn around, I want to look at your feet. So he turns around, bends over and fucking pulls <laughs> asshole him. Come on, big boy. And you weren't proper fucking mental. Went to your room at the inn. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was all out of me now. I'm just getting shouted and screamed out thinking, oh my God, what am I fucking doing? I was laughing my fucking ass off when he told me that. I hope there was no dingleberries that day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is it true then, there was no sleeping on a bed, there was the no. straw pillars for 630 days? Yep, all the time I was there, we got this, um, like a thin foot on. Uh... It was called like nine o'clock at night, from nine o'clock till uh, I think it was six thirty when it was raw cold. This shitty futon, and uh, it was like a grey sack, of, like McDonald's straws, like a one-inch straw, all shoved into this grey sack. Was that? And we had we had a big book of what you can't do and can't what you um, that shit. So you led there, and you had to lie on your back with this thing you weren't allowed to go under and out and you did do it eventually they kind of they were a bit more lenient but that old 
next. Oh, fucking never, never got used to that. I try and get in the foo, so I'm like doubling it over, so you got like from half inch to possibly an inch. It made <laughs> slight bit of difference, but then you were stuck there, kind of going like that with your head, like because we were walking up and down all the time, like watching you. So in a good way, not feeding you was actually good for you because you'd be lied to. <laughs> and then you'd be more comfortable well, on your half inch food, Tom. Yeah, I was just permanently starving, mate. I, I hated it being that hungry or yeah. drinking lots of water. I was just so hungry. Do you sleep differently until this day then? Because no, in Arizona, you weren't allowed a pillow. So now I, I can't handle pillows. Like I go have like either no pillow or just a ski very, very skinny pillow. Really? Yeah. No, no, I'm fine. I mean, weirdly enough, when I first got out and I got my own, uh, my own house, a friend of ours, the Everett, he got me, he said, I've got a bed for you, don't worry about it. Okay, he's got a fucking futon, like a, <laughs> a wood <laughs> futon thing. I'm like, I'm taking the he didn't realise, I'm like, I'm taking the fucking piss here. Like. So he had that futon for ages. Noodles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're allowed me to shout at you. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was shit, that. It was, that was, you know, when I finally got a bed, even in like the prison system, it's like a, it's like a rubbery, crappy, uh, it's not exactly a, but compared to that, it was like, oh my god, just stepping into a bed, you know, having your own. Oh, it was, it was, uh, it was a joy. I really enjoyed that. Like, it was so massively different between that extreme quiet and strictness to the chaos that was uh, Wandsworth. It was. Uh, I can imagine. Oh, I was buzzing off it really. What was it like when there were earthquakes in Japan? First, like the tremor is like, what is it? Is this an earthquake? Yeah, it's an earthquake. Then eventually, and, th and I think it was around about December, I, I had it on the date somewhere, it was 7.4. The fucking building is going like that for like uh, maybe two minutes or like a, not just like a, it was like a, and you, you hear this like, going, fuck me. You, you really think it's going to come down at like 7.4. That's fucking big. There was loads of them, but when it got to that one, this is the, I'm thinking, I'm going through the scenario, right? If it comes down, it, we can get the, do I get out? Do we go over the wall? I'm going to say, yeah. Do I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, like, I was proper going through the, then I'm going through, no, but do I save guards? Because that way, I might get free because he saved all the guards. He's a good guy. He could have fucked off. Because I'm thinking, <laughs> you might build a statue of you yes, in yes, the yes, yes. <laughs> In then a few minutes, I'm going through like, the best scenarios because I thought it was fucking coming down. <laughs> Believe me, I thought it was coming down, yeah. Yeah, you're praying. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any other escape plans? Yes and no. For only joke, uh, just for a bit of fun-wise. But how can I get out of here? Because my sentence was relatively small. It was five years, 100 days. So I always knew I was getting out. That was a good thing about my sentence. As bad as it was and shit it was, it wasn't a forever sentence. I was always very aware of, like, you know, I'm soon going to get over this. Yeah. And the time was always going. It was always like... Oh my God, it's got, it's like two months now. I was marking everything. It was all marking shit like, uh, oh my God, I've done six months. Like, oh, wow, I've done a year. I think, look, you're back at the year. Well, it's not going to get any worse than this. I know where I am in the system. It's all fine. It was always, my journey was always up, 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 up. The way I was looking at things mentally and, and I, knew, I knew they were never, ever going to break me. There was no point in, in that scenario was I ever going to lose. It was just about me adapting. You've always been a really stubborn fucker. It. He's always been a yeah, right yeah. stubborn fucker. Yeah, really. Yeah. For, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine that? And that helped in that situation. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Massively. And also, if you're saying, like, you're only pretending. You, if you did break out in the court, you'd say, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't really a escape. I was just kidding. Fully saying, come on, put it back up. <laughs> so there was a meeting on the first day in the cells with Simon, a pilot arrested for fighting Yakuza. Yeah, he was, um, he was a nice guy. Uh, He's fairly young for a pilot. He seemed to be young and uh, Australian guy. He'd lived in Japan for, for quite a few years, a Japanese wife. He'd end up, uh, I don't know what happened, but he ended up having a fight with his accuser. And um, he ended up getting, doing like 20 days. He had to pay a fine, whatever, but he'd lost his job. It, it was like a massive effect when we were saying, oh my God, the wife isn't too happy. He had, and uh, he's lost his job. He might be, they might have to move back to Australia, blah, blah, blah. But this was all through um, this Yakuza incident. But he, because he spoke fluent uh, Japanese, he for them, I think two days I was with him, he was so helpful. I was so lucky to have him in the first two days. It, because 
all the rest of the time was there, like 100 days in that. If it had been any of the other people, it just wouldn't have worked the same. Because I've got a guy saying, right, this is what's probably going to happen. And you, maybe you'll go to here and uh, this is what you want to be learning. So he was teaching me the certain Japanese and uh, what you want to do is this and that. Da, 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 da. Like, like, I was just so super lucky to get him for just only like two days. So John Abbott, who's one of our regular guests, yeah, and if John people haven't seen the John Abbott podcast, absolutely mind-blowing from his days in San Quentin, California. Just pure, you know, warrior stuff going on in there. Uh, so John Abbott, he spent time in Japan, speaks Japanese. He's watched all your stuff. And um, he said, yeah, what you were saying was spot on. And he also added to one of that, the, guard, the yeah. story about the guards. Did you see That's that? Right. Yeah, no, I, I totally seen it. For people who are not familiar with that story, could you just recap that? Yeah, so we we heard that uh, it was this certain guard who was a, he was a real fucking look about him. You know, he, people just looked like a cunt. And uh, they said, like, uh, I don't know, like a, a break times would ever go, he's a fucker him. This is, where the, this is why I felt like it was a rumour. Right, it might not have been the, the same guy, but the rumour and the talk is true. But the way it was said to me, or I was thinking, is this really true or what? But anyway, they'd, uh, this guy... Had uh, shoved the fire extinguishers up and killed this guy inside someone's yeah, they've, arsehole, they've got basically. Him and then, yeah, and they've yeah. done that. Um, and that was, but uh, so John Abbott knew the more of the story. Think, well, he because, added that this had happened multiple times, but they were just writing these deaths off as something or else. But then the the water damage or something came out. I don't think it's true. Okay. Just by what I'd seen and what I'd uh, felt about the place, it wasn't. It was so strict that nobody was doing anything, and I couldn't see how that could really get out and it being true, because it's so secretive and uh, the system is. I don't know. I just it, it sounded like a, it so sounded secretive. like a rumor. It's so secretive. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, sounded like it, a rumor. Yeah. it sounded like a rumor. Yeah, that gets out. You know, there's certain rumors. But you're aware out. of one instance of it, though. You just said there was one instance. That you of, were the aware of. of the rumour? Of the rumour. Yeah. Yeah, the... yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're not never, of, no, you never actually witnessed I wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. just a, he said, she said. But you saw the arsehole guard. Screen. Yeah, I seen him. Yeah. yeah. As the, he's a cunt. Oh, believe me, there was a lot of them. Uh, I want to say that, no, I think cunt's the wrong word for me. But, I mean, very fucking strict and rigid. And, yeah. you'd, you know, you'd, you didn't want to fuck with them as in, you'd be sent to punishment. They weren't going to physically do anything to you. Yeah. But you, it wasn't about that. It was about you did not want to spend one month sat there with your hands and knees like that, thinking what you'd done wrong for one month, going, oh, my fucking God. You know, you can't do this and that. You, so, I was very aware of it. I didn't want to do that. Well, that's no the way. thing, though, isn't it? You get that. It's like anything, especially all any stories. You will get rumours and all that kind of bullshit. But, I mean, then the thing, when you get a place that's so secretive and everything, you know, Japan, Japan keeps everything quiet and all that lot, then there's that element too. So you don't know, do there's you? There's often you know? a grain of truth in every rumour. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> yeah, a grain, perhaps, in a fucking, you know, in a shredded I mean, week. I mean, possibly he's seen in the newspaper that it did yeah. come out. It was, yeah. it was a real yeah. thing. Yeah. Maybe he's seen that. I'm just going to, from my opinion, that I didn't think it was true. Yeah. There's so much bullshit in fucking prison. Of Jesus course, yeah, Christ. yeah. So you, you've got to really got to read through these things. I didn't have any feeling that I was in any danger of violence or anything like that. To be honest, I was up for fucking violence in there. I kind of wanted, I wanted it to happen, but I didn't want the punishment for it, yeah. from it. Yeah. That like when yeah. I was putting that nut house for a while, I'm thinking, right, what am I going to have to do here or... Uh, I kind of wanted a bit of interaction. That's why when I went to Wandsworth, I was, in some ways, I was looking forward to that. Uh, Get some stress out of your system yeah. as well. Yeah, and you know, watch the films with Mick Vicker and all that, and it's all, <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm the fucking daddy. No, you're not. No, no, I didn't want to go that far, but I just thought, I expected it was going to be that way. Yeah, yeah. But the screws did say to me, listen, get your head down, you get your cat D within a, a few months to avoid any conflict. I'm thinking, all oh, right, that's the kind of changed my plans because I didn't fully know what this Cat D system was. I'd heard things and whatever, but I hadn't fully grasped it to right, really speaking to an officer saying, as I was saying, like, uh, I'm kind of looking forward to one first, having a bit of a fucking bust up and all that. <laughs> and, uh, they're going, no, mate, just don't don't bother with all that. Get your head down, thinking. So I've got a long time on the plane to think about this shit. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. Well, winding right, yourself uh, up like fuck. <laughs> well, so I'm kind of, no, I'm kind of winding myself down. I'm like, yeah, yeah, don't be a dick, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, he knows me. It's a miracle. I've gone. I think I was like three and a half years in there, 
not one fight. Yeah. Not one fight. fucking yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for people watching this then, John Abbott did a lot on the Yakuza in his third podcast with us. I would, um, if you guys want to check that stuff out, man, absolutely um, mind blowing his stories. He's got a, there's a clip that's gone viral about his San Quentin stay as well. It's called Hell's Angel Assassin in California Prison, I think. And the way that John Abbott just delivers his stories is very, um, I find him quite fascinating. I've seen pictures of him back when he was in prison. He was absolutely massive from working out. But when you see him now, older, he's got kind of a mild manner about him, but you can see how deadly he is as well. Um, They're like that. Though. Just, the, just the blokes. Have you, have you seen him? No, I haven't seen him. But I yeah. know the bloke. Do, do you know when you get all the gobby mouthy ones? They're never the ones to worry about. Exactly. Do you, the ones that have got fuck all to prove. Yeah. They're the ones that, like, say, and they are, like, you know, like Steve's always, he's always mild mannered, fun, and everything like that. You know, and yeah. I've seen Steve's anything like that. But then, guys, them are the ones. It's the quiet ones that you fucking, and the ones that are nice, don't fuck with them. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Even fish. How's your <laughs> crash? How's your father? Come on, we got that. I can see him. He was very polite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I won't want to be punched by him. <laughs> no, no, no. It's only there. Yeah, it's everything in that. But there was, there was a moment in the story where all the fellas are working out, doing all this exercise and everything, and Fish is outside with nothing on his on his uh, fists, just fucking punching a tree <laughs> to make his his punch hard and the tree barks is flying everywhere. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> Some blokes just want to fight, don't they? Yeah. Some blokes just want to scrap, don't yeah. they? Do you know what I yeah. mean? Like, like, like wild man. Here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some blokes just want to do it. Yeah. I came a mate who were at Marines and everything over there, and he was saying something about them, because I said, you know, why don't you do that? He says, some blokes just love to fucking fight. Yeah. You know, and they join up for that as well. He's to go over for a fucking... They'd be saving our lives back yeah, in the yeah, day yeah. when and the village yeah. was raided. I think it's, it's what what you need it's what nature is isn't it yeah and you have those that go out and defend the tribes and all that kind of stuff you know yeah. and it's in your dna it's yeah. in your dna you know warrior dna it's it it's in yeah. your dna yeah. you're born yeah. to fucking fight you know what i mean you can get all yeah. them that'll train up but they'll never be as good as one who's no. fucking trained and got that it's dna naturally, that's the yeah, thing isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're on the subject of the yakuza then yeah and uh, you, you, you fuji was well, you... Peter, I'm gonna <laughs> drink your cider <laughs> your first um, Yakuza mate was Fuji. What was Fuji's story? Fuji, he, uh, I forget how much drugs he had, but he had class A, he was in a lot of shit. I think he was about uh, 27 and late 20s. No kids, but he was married. He kept on, he kept on saying about his wife, he's saying, Ooh, she, he didn't speak that good English, but he was going, but like, a, she crazy bull, she's not happy. <laughs> so, because, and, yeah, he was like a young Yakuza lad, like she and I think his wife didn't know anything about this his involvement on the other side. So it was like uh, he showed me a picture of her and said she was such a nice, innocent, you know, like a lovely couple. And uh so he's playing the lovely couple, but really he's in getting involved with the Yakuza shit. And uh now nah, um and I, I really liked him. He was he was a kickboxer and we used to do it all day. We were uh like as he was teaching me uh, Japanese and stuff. We'll be doing like sparring, uh, different vo versions of sparring, uh, kicking, like standing on one foot. Uh, you, couldn't, you, you couldn't like move off one foot, so you had to try and get the other one off by kicking them. <laughs> because he was kickboxing, I was just, like losing like a foot. <laughs> then we play a game where you're like, you, you're tagging, you're to ah! yeah, sorry, Wall, sorry, Wall. <laughs> you, you're tagging each other's shoulder. <laughs> Kobe jab. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I really liked him and uh, I've, I've never got in contact with him since and uh but he was a cool guy he learned me so much about how the, the cues are the systems are and uh the way it all is i was a lot more like i wasn't worried about going into the the prison system with all the yakuza because i i kind of presumed that a lot of them would be but he says oh no Steve. he says you'll be fine and also i don't think he'd been in prison as well so he didn't knew it, a lot ne nearly everybody didn't know what we were going into because the Japanese system is is very good for once you go in there, you don't want to fucking go back there. <laughs> so there's a lot. There isn't. Say like you go in the English system, like oh you meet somebody, yeah I want to fine, he is in fucking there and whatever. 
there's a, nobody has that story because you go in there, you go, I don't want to fucking go there again. And it's that. So the so this lad, but he knew, he presumed now who it was going to be. He said, there'll be no worries, so you'll be fine with the accuser. It's not like they can do anything anyway. So like, straight away from the off, thinking, right, okay. It'll be, uh, it, it's more of this, I knew I'd be fighting the system, not the people in the system. Whereas, like, I'm going to Wandsworth, I presume I'm going into uh, fucking Mr. Ruffy Tuffy. Uh, that gives you fucking cornflakes here, you can't. And go, fuck off. My cornflakes. Your own fucking cornflakes. <laughs> <laughs> so what did he teach you about the Yakuza then? Well, you know, like in the time we was there, yeah, I was probably with him for maybe two months. Just about um, just about the respectfulness of that they're, they're, not, they're not cunts, basically. What they are can be, for sure. But what I was going to be involved with wasn't going to be... I, you know, I, I don't know how I can say it. There was just basically nothing to worry about. They weren't that kind of... Uh, the big old gangsters or this and that. You weren't going to get slashed and... Thing. Well, I mean, you said earlier that he, they, he taught you about the structure of them or the organisation of them. Yeah, but only in... Uh, so I, I remember, there were, I think it's, there was like three families... Um, he was in a certain side. I wouldn't even be able to remember which one he told me because it really didn't make a difference. You can, we can all Google these things. We can all watch the films. I think Umigumi Gucci. Uh, but I've got that from Kill Bill. You know, I, I'm thinking, <laughs> what are they calling Kill Bill? But the reality of wh where I'm there, it's not a thing that's talked about. There's one guy that I was that end up involved with. Uh, we talked. It was almost like a fantasy of uh, he wanted me to get all this cannabis from Nepal and India and blah blah blah. How it would make him the big boss of this certain group and shit. Then we were going to be millionaires. But I knew when we were talking about this that it was all a fantasy. Yeah. I had no. In, I had. There's no fucking way was I going back there. Yeah. Not for a million squillion, whatever. But it was all part of the. I don't know, the, it's like a bit of a fancy of getting through. Well, it gets you through it, doesn't it? it? Yeah, yeah, you know I, I knew. The fantasy knew was, of getting you through yeah. it, yeah. Not one moment did I really think any of that was true. Where he might have done. Yeah. I was just going along with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I can get you all He might it. still yeah, be yeah. in there now going to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a regular really fucking idea. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've done it four times. It doesn't worry, but this time. <laughs> but uh, the finger thing, that was quite interesting. Oh, really? You won't believe how many of them got the fingers cut off. What? Oh, yeah, I would say. Yakuza guys? Yeah, yeah. I would say... What's that about? If they fuck up in somewhere, they have to give the old chop. I think it starts... I presume it starts that one way. Snip it off and give it to the... I'm sorry. Do they have to do it in front of the boss? I don't I don't know. I don't think they do. I think uh, they whip it off and then they go to the... Like, a, a big sorry. What I... When I asked them, I said, what have you been doing? Like, uh, there's, there's loads of them like that. One finger, two finger. And... Uh, I didn't meet this guy, but he made me laugh. He said, uh, there was a guy in just before I was in there, he'd gone through all his fingers and he was into his toes. Oh, fuck That's off. how shit he was at Fuck Hall. me, that <laughs> shit. Yeah, that's a bad Yakuza. <laughs> Fucking yeah. hell. I bet yeah. he kept picking up the wrong end of a candle and all, didn't he? So, yeah. <laughs> you know when you get mad, mad stories like that, there was like a few of them that this guy was in there just before, like, so I knew that story yeah. was true. Do you reckon... Yeah. It was yeah. the fire extinguisher one. It sounded like, mm, I knew that story was uh, true. Do you reckon you'd get no beds who were trying to like pretend that they're a fucking, you know, like gangsters and all that. Just cut do it for the cut, Yeah. Possibly, you know, like, yeah, do you know yeah. how people go to the levels of bullshit they'll go yeah. to, you know? But that's like with the Aryan Brotherhood gang. If you get those Nazi tattoos yeah, that, and yeah. you're not part of them and you end up in prison, they basically say, yeah. right, we're going to kill you or right. we're going to fucking cut those off you and burn them off you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Choice is yours. What, which, what would you rather have? Fucking Yeah. Man. Yeah, that's, that's something you don't want to get caught with. No, no. <laughs> There's so much bullshit goes on in prison, don't they? It's like uh, it's, like, it's like an extreme bitchiness sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. You've got nothing better to do than say, I'm That's fucking, what a lot of it is, isn't I've it? done this, I've done that. All that shit, like, what you're in for, like, uh, you know, there'll be some thieving bastard who does whatever. Probably nicks a drum kit when he was a kid. <laughs> but, you know, next minute, he, he's a bank robber and uh, this, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to produce your paperwork, usually. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so there was Kimura, the Yakuza boss. Mm. What was his story? Yeah, I don't know what he was in for. 
Uh, he didn't speak hardly any English, but he was a, a really cool guy. He was proper tattooed up, probably the most tattooed, like literally from the to wrist to to the feet, all full body. And uh, he, he he was in the tug of war team. He was like uh, one of the captains in the tug of they war were team. Mad on that, weren't they? they yeah, were mad, mad on tug mad, of war. You remember oh, telling me? Yeah, yeah. yeah, they were mad on it. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so he was like one of the he was the he was a heavyweight um, like like captain. Um, he was like super strong as well. He was only uh, maybe thirty five. He felt youngish for a for a big boss. You could feel the respect in the in the factory of, and the way we, the way he, he had a good sense of humor. He was the one that called me Ichiban, son of a bitch. The way we're having the crack, and he got mm, Stephen. Ichiban, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the way he do it. He was, just, he was just a cool character. And, uh, yeah, I really liked him. Uh, I mean, I didn't have, like, a, a lot of uh, involvement with him because his English was so bad and my Japanese was pretty bad. But the level of kind of respect we had through this being together in a team and the way I could see him reacting with everybody. It's like a very this hierarchy that they all have. You probably see your determination system. as well, because you'd be well determined if you took a walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he has sure, to win yeah, and everything, yeah. you know what I mean? So <laughs> you'd, you'd have seen that level as well, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I just I, I just kinda of got on with him in a, in a way. And that like there was a another guy who was younger than him. He was like an up and coming uh, Yakuza guy. Again, it, we're on the tug of war thing. So he, I'm not sure what had happened. When we were in the, the practicing area, in the gym, the big boss, the, the Tanto San Screw officer or whatever, he said to this guy, right, uh, you, uh, you're no good. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fuck you off. Uh, I'm going to get this other guy in. And he's kind of gone. He's made him look an idiot. So he, he's, he's this new up-and-coming Yakuza to whatever. You could see kind of what was going on. He's, and he's kind of gone. So it's all very quiet. It's all, he's going, what? I'll do it in English, obviously. He's going, what, what do you mean? I, this is my job. I'm doing it. The big boss is going, no, 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 no. I'm the big boss here. I'm the, the officer. It says, you, go away. We're getting the other guy in. You can feel the atmosphere. <laughs> They're going, because just to raise voices. So I'm literally translating this in my head, what's going on. Thinking, all right, yeah, okay, he's being fucked off here. He's not happy about this. His head's going. So he's kind of going, no, no, I am, I am the boss of this, this, you know, you're the, you're the, you're the screw officer. I am, this is my team. And I, you can't disrespect respect me. All this stuff. Uh, I'll fucking, I'll do what I want. I'm the boss. You fucking sit down there. So next minute, this guy's going like up to him thinking, oh my God, don't do this. I don't know how I'm stood behind him. So I just grabbed all this guy and I get him in a lock and go, calm down, calm down, mate. Uh, I think I forget what it is for calm down, but I was saying it, whatever it was. I'm going, calm down, calm down. Or straight away, he's, he's have a, I think there's a button or a whistle, I can't remember now, but the panic button has gone. I know. And they come in like, you wouldn't believe it. Fucking hundreds of them. They're all coming in. I'm thinking, shit. <laughs> I've got all this fucking young, uh, young lad. I've got the American guy, Ken, saying to me, so it's Steve, let him go, let him go, let him go. <laughs> I'm thinking, do I let him go, fucking what? Because I know if I'm going to let him go, he's going to go for the, I thought he's going to be in big shit if I let him go. I thought, right, I timed it. So we're in the gym there, you can little see, it was, it was like that thing in Kill Bill where they all come out of everywhere. Oh, yeah. Shit, <laughs> get the timing right, ready, and let go. And, there you go, sit down, <laughs> look at you with me. And that's the end. <laughs> it was him, it was him. <laughs> and basically that's what happened. Uh, like, it was Ken, the American guy, that said to me, Steve, let him go, let him go, don't get involved. I thought, yeah, fuck, fuck, it was all quick. I'm thinking, right, yeah, yeah, let him go. What was the repercussions for you? And nothing. That's wow. because it was all that that timing. Yeah. Of the guard knew uh, the main boss knew what I was doing. Yeah, it was never it was never been brought up. I really thought, oh, that's me, fucking shit. Over. But I was doing the right thing at the end of the day. I didn't want it. Uh, I mean, it wasn't me, mate. But uh, you know, like I didn't want him. I didn't want him getting fucked because if he'd have punched that guard, God knows what would have happened to him. Was there any other situations where you stepped in like that? No, no. I think that's that. It was so there were there were so much lack of violence or anything like we're all very aware not to do anything i think i said in the first one was was a mate of mine kind of mate he was like a james one baddie a big tall guy with bald head alopecia everybody hated him not hated him but they didn't get him he spoke pretty good english 
I, I realised as he was walking around the yard, everybody was ignoring him, this new guy in, in the factory. Because of the way he looked? Because of the way he looked, the way everybody kind of like, I thought, he said, maybe he's a Chinese, this guy. So I, I kind of, it's a very rare moment you get to talk to each other. So at this point, but I could see what was going on. And I said, uh, how you doing, mate? Where are you from? Uh, I thought you might say China. He said, oh, wherever we, we spoke good English. I, thought, I said, your English is good. It's quite rare because when they speak English. So I got a bit of conversation going. I thought, he's all right, this guy. And I couldn't work out why. I think it's just because the look of it, he looked quite intimidating. But anyway, maybe a couple of days later, something had gone on. I was over there in this big yard. And this, it was an handbag thing going on, but the whistle... I can't remember a whistle or a horn, whatever, it goes off. And we're all told, sit down. And this thing, and they all come in, like ants everywhere, go and took him off. But uh, it was pretty rare, really, that uh, anything that dra- It's not even that dramatic, is it? It's not like a major thing. Well, like I say, you can see from his behaviour when more, he comes back. Da- it's happened. dangerous, isn't it? Because like, there's this, even though nothing's happening, it's not happening because what could happen? So you've got this constant tension it's like just in this whole there, story yeah. where anything could happen, no. really, if it fucking did But the thing on. is, like I say, when you when you can see with his reaction with Steve when he came back, how institutionalised he was. Yeah. So he must have been... It's in, it was in him. I mean, are you running, how long were you in Nick Forever? Is it two, two years? Oh, uh, t- 630 days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like, do you know what I mean? And the, that's the effect it had on him. He would come back. I mean, I know he was fucked up with Valium and hacking and everything, but you could still see, I'm all right here. I'm fucking... You no, know, no, it wasn't just the Valium. It's like in a, on our first podcast, when as we were talking about things, when I look back at it, I realised, fuck me, the more you... And also when... So it's almost like, is it possibly 10 years since it's all happened? Reliving it and rereading, because I've got like books and law, I've wrote everything it down. It brings the emotions back, So it brought it? it all yeah, back when I did yeah. the first podcast about it all. I kind of like moved on from it. I'll tell the story and have a crack about it, but to really think how bad it, and it all was, as we were doing that first podcast, I kind of flashbacked into it a little bit. Imagine. I did actually tell you, didn't I? If you remember, I said I nearly I nearly turned it off at one point because when we started talking about the Valium stuff, I, I went a little bit weird. I thought, oh, but I kind of blagged my way through it. You said it, it wasn't noticeable because I couldn't even see it myself. But the fact was that you think you're over it, but when you start talking about these things, yeah, that's what memories do. It's always do, there though, that little yeah. bit, isn't it? When you revert back to whispering, yeah, you you go in there, right? You yeah. mentally, yeah, 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 yeah. Because it was yeah. a con- it was a constant whisper, yeah. Mm. And as I was trying to, I'm trying to re- relive the story for you and how I, like, like how, what was like when I was really there, and it was a whisper because we couldn't speak like this, yeah. except for the shouting bit with the because uh, it's like. Uh, when we did ours the other night, do you remember when I put up the prism? With, when we did the, the, uh, yeah, the stream yeah, yeah. the other night, so I, on the background, I have like a, a thing, <laughs> and I got to the prism. You fucking got me with this. And, and I had the answer. Because uh, uh, this uh, thing, uh, like, uh, where uh, was today? <laughs> so I always put a picture up. He's got I, this green screen behind him. And I put it on. Uh, I put it on the prison. And then I found a prison of fucking, of, of, you know, inside, which obviously, I, and I put it on, and he went, Whoa, fucking! And you were telling me about the sneaky carpets. Yeah, yeah. They have, they have these like um, maybe one foot carpets all the way along the side of the uh, the cells, and they take the shoes off and put like a, a slip thing on, and they just like, glide past and they're, like watching you. They walk up and down every ten minutes. Because that button in you said. There's a button. Say like this is the beginning of it. There's a button there because my cell was there. Eventually, you move you move cells along all the time. You're never in the same spot. You'll go there, there, maybe once a month, then you'll move to there. That's crazy. So, so They're moving you, can, you all the time. Yeah. No, not, I say every six weeks. Yeah, it's a mind then. fuck, isn't it? When they settled. That that didn't seem that much of a bother. In some ways, it were like, a, I wonder where we're going next. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were going that far. We were going there. No, because I, I've, I've read this in my me, me diary when uh, I went from one side, I was there for one year on one side. When I eventually got really, I was on the other side where the sun came in. I was like, oh my God, I can finally see. And there was a tree. So you can see the opposite <laughs> cell through the window. You can see a bit of a tree. You'd be imagining, I wonder what that tree is like. I wonder what kind of tree is it? And when you eventually get in the sea, you see the top of the tree. It's like, ooh. ooh. <laughs> 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 oh, ridiculous, isn't it? It really is fucking ridiculous, but that is what you. Because what are you saying about like, is it, if he hasn't touched that button, has he? In fucking yeah, it's a ten minute. Yeah. You can hear, you can literally hear a button being pressed. It's that quiet going. 
All right, he's off. Like, right, That's your time. wanking time. It's time then. for a wank. <laughs> 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 or whatever. Not just that, but it was time to like do press ups and stuff, yeah. or uh, or whatever you're doing. Uh, we do you have buckets for uh, cleaning the floor? You'd fill them with water and use them for like curls and stuff. You weren't allowed to use any weights or anything like that. So you had that little five minute. You knew. And also, right, it was very crafty how you work in the prison system. You had opposite cells that was an open bit, maybe, uh, I don't know, 20 metres. There was other cells, and they could see you. Sometimes, maybe if they could see a screw through the wind coming, say if you do like the sparring, whatever, you'd have a mate going, you go, it's coming, it's coming, you go, it's, it's so, like, well done. <laughs> and uh, none of us ever got done uh, for, like, swapping things from one cell to the other. We had a few little systems of when... Uh, this uh, South African lad would bring like your socks and your clean clothes, your letters. It was like a system how it would pass through your window at the end of the day before you got banged up. Through that, say for example, I had soy sauce in my thing, which was very, you had soy sauce and Worcester sauce that, that you got, but I didn't like it. Ken, the American guy, loved this. Uh, so I would, he like swap that and give that one to sell. It was like a, a way of doing it. But, I mean, you would do a month's punishment if you got caught doing that. But we never got caught doing any of that kind of cheeky shit. You're not mad that. Month's punishment for fucking Worcester sauce. <laughs> well, uh, well, actually, I was reading this the other day and I forgot about this. Quinton, the, the South African guy, he got caught. You got a... Uh, he was in like an enhanced... After three years, he got to a second... Uh, the third level. So he got uh, some juice, like an orange juice. And what he'd done... You've got to eat quick, rapid, clean it all up, and then put it back on and sit there like that. Mm. He'd saved his orange for later. He'd been caught, like, sipping his orange, so he had one-month punishment for that. Fuck yeah. Hell. I read that, I thought, ooh, I remember that, yeah. Just for a bit of juice in your room, like, you know. Strict. Isn't it fucking mad? And then you've got to think to yourself, why the fuck did I just drink the orange? <laughs> 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 but you know what I was doing? I, I eventually got um, like an iced coffee. I was dying for a brew. But they used to bring you, I used to call it hoi chat, hot piss. You get a kettle with just lukewarm uh, tea. I'd get that and get me a, like a coffee and put the coffee in so it was almost like a semi kind of brew. Yeah. Or like a, oh, this is better. <laughs> but then, you, you know, you're risking a month's punishment for that, but... <sighs> That's fucking mad, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of tattoos did you see in the Japanese prison? Well, when you would go through, uh, from being in your cell to marching as a group into the factory, you'd have to change all your clothes in an area. Then you walk over this uh, a glass, sorry, a mirror. So you walk over bullet naked. See, now I feel I can shout it more than last time. But I'd have to give me number. You've got to shout your number. So I'd, I'd be a uh, bollico walking over this glass. Young Sen Sambiaku, need you at your band. They go, hey, go. Like that. Right, so you're off. So you then you're into the next part, then you get dressed up in the, uh, the factory uh, gear. They, uh, was, what was the question about that? I forgot where I was. What tattoos, tattoos do you see? see? All right, so at that point, you're in a little queue of the system of putting your clothes off and getting in there. So you're staring at all the, the Yakuza. Most of the Yakuza are in here. There's a few that you, you think aren't, but, um, but mostly they're uh, they're all tattooed. Up. So you're staring at these uh, Japanese tattoos. And uh, as I was getting into the art and the drawing, I was um, I'm thinking, all right, they were... Uh... So you're trying to watch it, looking at the story of... They'd be like, a, like for example, like a warrior fighting off... Uh, a dragon or a tiger, and these, they're all the different, very similar -ish stories of like, I don't know, hope and worrying, worrying kind of shit. But it's all over the bodies. And, and I asked them, say, what does that actually mean? Like, Kimura, I can't remember what his tattoos were now. I, I probably wrote it down. You were somewhere. telling me about that story. Yeah, I was trying to remember as it went on then. You were telling me about, you'd ask one, because you said you were all about his, his, his life story all yeah. over him, weren't they? I think that was Kimura, yeah. And, uh, Samuel Rice stuff. Yeah, based in like in history. You can imagine and, a lot of that, can't you? Yeah, it is that kind of uh, thing, the, the classic, because they're all, it's got a t tibura thing, it's called, I might be getting that wrong. Um, uh, but it's basically jabbing it in, it's, you know, like a, as we use a machine, there's, it's, it's not just about the art, it's the art, 
It's about taking the punishment and the pain and withstanding hours and hours of it. I mean, look how good Wallace's tattoo is. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, show sure, everybody. It literally is the worst it's tattoo. It's the worst tattoo. Like, I call it Weedy One, weedy one Leg. But it's not even a prison one. I no. went out on the piss with a tattoo artist. I went back to his house, give us a fucking tattoo, and we got Weedy One Leg. <laughs> 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 he called it Weedy One Leg. Don't do tattoos, kids. <laughs> I've always kept it for that. I just would love one day to cover that up. No, but I, I, it's like some of from back in the day, you know what I mean? And then shit. But I mean, I, I went out with, uh, like I said, I went out pissed with mate who was, who was a so-called tattoo artist. He was a fucking shit as well. <laughs> but then I got back to his house. We were all really drunk. He was a fucking tattoo. <laughs> I just remember yeah. bleeding a lot. So can you actually do tattooing in the yeah, Japanese yeah. prison? Oh, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. Too strict. There is, no, there's zero fucking anything. There is no extra food. There is no, obviously, cigarettes. There is no... Uh, there's nothing. You get a list of what you can get every month, but it'd be like pens, pencils. We can only get so many of them. Um, uh, writing paper. You can only do so many letters a week. After you get a badge, you get a white badge like your starter. Then a, a, a red badge that's like after one year being good. And then for that you get an extra one film a month. You get an extra one cake a month. And then and uh, maybe two letters uh, a week, a month. But uh, but very small, but when you're there, it feels like a lot. I knew I didn't want to get the uh, the next stage up because I think if I've been here that long to get what they get, I didn't want to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just knew. I thought, no, I don't well, want to get it. Well, that's what you said. You just did that Jimi Hendrix picture you did, just in pencil, weren't it? It was really fucking good. It was really good. I was like, because yeah, you were always I, artistic, like, but I saw that, I thought, Fucking hell, that's good. I didn't know you could do that. And, you know, obviously... And yeah, then you, you know, the artwork really saved me in many ways. I was just permanently just drawing and drawing, doing drawing for people, and uh, I realised, fucking hell, I, I am pretty uh, not bad at this. I was good at it at school and stuff, but I stopped doing it. I moved on Brick Lane and... and uh, Where's the Hendrix picture now? I think I've still got that at home. You had, it, you had it up on the wall for yeah, years. Yeah, for years. Ages. Yeah, for years. Yeah, for ages. Just on the wall with Wazzy shit on. Just send us a picture if you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll do. I hope I, yeah, I had it on the wall for fucking youngs. But yeah, it massively got me through it. And it does with a lot of people, um, the artwork, for sure. For sure. I've done the for sure thing. You've done the for sure thing. <laughs> it's his new fucking catchphrase. It's just go- I didn't t- yeah. I didn't realise that I told him what way out tonight. He's, He's just just going, saying, for He just sure. stopped saying for sure. I went, what are you on about? I went, you're saying for sure every minute. I went, am I? Fuck, no, I'm not. Next minute we were talking about something. I went, yeah, for, for sure. sure. I went, I fucking am <laughs> on I? I said, <laughs> Can you say that in the way the American rappers say it? Seeing as though we started with American rappers. Oh, for rappers. sure, wouldn't it? If, is for show. Sure. For sure. Hey! Oh, oh, show, show, homie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it must be wrapping up time, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. We've, uh, I'm we've, not rapping. <laughs> we've not even gone from through halfway through the questions. No, no, we've still, still got, still got yeah. plenty of time. Yeah, good. Yeah. Who was Specky? Specky Sensei. Oh, Specky Sensei. And what was your friendship with him? So Specky Sensei was uh, he, another like Yakuza a guy. Power range, isn't it? <laughs> no, he had these big dodgy speckies uh, glasses, like. So, but he, he used to teach. He spoke pretty good English, and uh, I was teaching him uh, English, and he was teaching me Japanese because you know you need to be a certain level from both angles to be uh, teaching the languages. But it was very dodgy. When it was the one night I talked to him about the crazy place when I got stuck in this crazy place, and I said to him, I said, uh, "See that wing over there? You can see." I said. I got put in there. It was a fucking crazy place. I accidentally got put in there. He went, yeah. He says, I was in there for four years. I'm going, fuck off. I thought, how? He says, well, he stabbed somebody up in uh, Hokkaido prison. And he got sent down here. Over what? I don't know. He was a crazy bastard. Somebody he, called he, him Specky. He, he, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. You kind of went like that. <laughs> yeah. You're specky for sure. Yeah. <laughs> As I was talking to him, I'm thinking, I'm having the banter and all that kind of thing. I'm thinking, this guy's a fucking serious, uh, uh, what's the word for it? Fucking loose cannon. Boss. And uh, so he, he, and I said, why were you in there for so long? So I just, I wasn't uh, like touching the walls, doing this. They kept him in there, and because of what, it, because of this stabbing. But he wouldn't. Uh, he wouldn't give in to the system right. of 
Because when you do the month, when it starts with the month thing, if say if you, like I said, for Quinter with, with the juice, he's gone in there for a month. He has to sit there, cross-legged, either bent over or legs like that. You have to sit there for the eight hours a day. Think about what you've done wrong. If you start doing something wrong, they go, right, you're not learning. It's, it starts from now. So that month starts from now. You could be like three weeks, yeah, four yeah, days yeah. in, and you, you get caught, but I don't know, whatever you're doing, going to the toilet when you shouldn't do it, minuscule things to go, right, you're not learning, sit down and think what you're doing wrong. So he's there four fucking years in, with, and he, he eventually thought, yeah. I've got to calm down about people calling me fucking uh, Specky uh, for an eyes uh, sensor. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, a, he was quite a strong guy, but he wasn't strong enough to be in a team. But he wants, because he was a very powerful, like a, as in a heavy in the Yakuza system, but physically wasn't, he was strong. Mental strong. But he was, he was like, <laughs> he was crazy mental. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you could feel the crazy mental shit going on. Yeah. And, uh, but at the same time, we enjoyed each other company because we were uh, like learning this thing. But then he said to me, uh, he's going, Stephen, Stephen, uh, punch me in the stomach as hard as you can. I think, oh, for fuck's sake, here we go. Yeah. He says, no, just feel how strong I am going. So the, the Tanto Sands, the screws officers, are looking all the time. I'm thinking, oh, for fuck's sake. He's going, no, no, no. He's like, it's okay, it's okay. Go on, go on. Go on now. So we're right, okay. Give him a bit of a dig like this. No, no, fucking proper, proper. Go for it. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. Fucking hell. He's going, oh, yeah, yeah. He's going, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm thinking, right, let's not go there with this one. I didn't give him fuck that. I suppose he went down. Yeah. Oh, he's just in me. <laughs> yeah. Fucking stomach. He's smashed my glasses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As, you, as you're being fucking carted out, that's a call of me specky. <laughs> 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 yeah. So as you're getting rotated through these cells then, did you get the breathtaking view of Mount Fuji? This is when me and him, there was a certain um, one of the yards, it was three yards, two big ones and a smaller one. On a really clear day, you could see the view of Mount Fuji. Oh, uh, Fuji. oh my God, it was amazing. It had to be really clear there because it's quite far away. Yeah, I'm sure somebody will Google it and say, that's impossible to fucking see. But then they're well, fuck off, you can. Trust me. They always do have that voice, don't they, then, fuckers and all. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so on them cute, them clear days, it was it was so, it was breathtaking to see. And you think, oh, I'm going to get out. I want to get out of there. It, it felt like it was in the last few months that we were seeing that view as well. Because I, I left in like a, a June or July it was 20th. The day I landed is when they landed on the moon, the 20th of either June or July, it's July, is when I landed back in England. So through that, that I luckily I'd, I'd gone through like two bad fucking cold winters there. Fucking bad. Yeah, what were you saying about So I, had, I was dreading facing another winter. So luckily, I'd, just, I'd had the good part of the time and then, uh, but yeah, to see Mount Fuji and uh, it, it it feels like freedom. It feels like because it's so natural. It's like earth and uh, I'd love to get go all to hippie Japan. and shit. Like, yeah. Oh, believe I really me. would. If you can, go, I am not allowed to go to Japan. But <laughs> if you can get, what a fantastic country and the people they are. Because I bet they're so I different. Do, you know, what as I mean? shit as that time was, I have a lot of respect for that Japanese system because mm. it really makes me not want to go to Nepal and be a millionaire fucking again <laughs> dealing with the Yakuza fucking four right cunts grassing me up <laughs> fucking whatever it is yeah my sister no, my sister no lived interest. in Japan for years she Did speaks she? Japanese oh, yeah she's yeah. yeah, she really cool. good I fucking love to go to yeah. Japan I yeah. really would my parents went out there and they said it's a different world exactly yeah, it that's why yeah. that's why I'd like to go yeah they just seem to have a really good way about uh, where they are and the way they live you know, they live longer than any fucker. Very high standard of living and everything's very clean and stuff like that. And they have a good sense of humour and they like a beer and they like a laugh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like, we're, like we're, we're about with music and stuff. I remember going to this bar and uh, this guy, he could hardly play the guitar. He's wrote his own song. He's, he's singing in Japanese. He's, next to me, he's crying. He's, he's all out of tune. We're all out like, <laughs> fucking brilliant, this. <laughs> it went like amazing, just fusing this pub. The emotion that had been, you know. Yeah. So who was, who was the Mongolian you helped get out to his pregnant wife? Oh, that was... Uh... Yeah, told me about this one. Go on, yeah, that was your story. Mongolian, yeah. 
There is some because he forgets to, his fucking yeah, memory's right. fucked. Right, I can't. I'm, oh, like I've been drinking to, I'm going to go for another pee. <laughs> you talk, and I've got to Such a fucking slag bladder. <laughs> I know. Captain <laughs> fucking slag bladder. That's what we call him. I'm building up the excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you're taking your beer with you. <laughs> you might have to check his prostate after this. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 early. Early. It'd be weird, wouldn't it? When he was talking about the sumo thing, see if shit drops out. <laughs> Let's have a fucking loose ass if shit's going to drop out. You know what oh, I mean? dear. Yeah, yeah I, I read um, something about, I think it was a Colombian guy in prison who was like a boss, but he'd been so wealthy and he'd eaten so much food. He got so big that he couldn't wipe his own ass in this Colombian prison. So he had to pay another prisoner to wipe his ass. I had a conversation about that on fucking Friday, asking the same thing. How do you really massively obese people wipe yeah. their fucking ass? Because you've got to pull it apart, are not yeah. you? Yeah. And then once you've pulled it apart, I mean, I just want to try to envision you slop it down the side or whatever. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> and yeah. I, I, that's well spooky, that, because I was just asking the same thing. And he's like, oh, fucking shut up. But it's fascinating me, is it? I had another soldier who had to pee a lot, and he had, I think it's called an inguinal hernia, so that his testicles were, like, down here, and it can actually strangulate and kill you, and the jail won't give him the operation. Get out So he, boy. all night long, every couple of hours, he was having to piss. So I had a few cellmates who had, who had piss problems, and if you if you're, you have to establish an etiquette with them, because you, you basically your cell is a is a toilet. You're living in a yeah. room or like a bathroom, a toilet. Yeah, yeah. So the etiquette is when they go up during the night for piss, do you want them just to leave it in the can and not flush, which will because because the flushing will wake you up. Yeah, yeah. So there's a hygiene thing of leaving it in the can all night or flush, 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 and you're gonna wake up all night long. <sighs> so I always chose just to leave it in the can. It's got to be something shitting in front of somebody and all that kind of stuff. You get used to it. Yeah. But you get used yeah, to it. Yeah, obviously, you'd have to, but you've got no choice, have you? Yeah, you drop one, you flush one. And these flushes are really powerful. So, <laughs> like in a plane. Like if you're in a hole, yeah, like in a plane. It's almost like a bee day. It's like in your ass crack and everything. So if, <laughs> so if, you're, if you're in like a holding, if you're in like a holding cell yeah. and there's like 30 dudes and they're all just sat there like sardines and someone's got to take a shit. And so if that's someone who's taking the shit doesn't know the etiquette, everyone starts yelling, drop one, flush oh, one, right. drop one, flush <laughs> one, motherfucker. People are wrapping towels or things around the... Yeah, oh, it gets, you gets seen when they, they light a bit of uh, angerine, uh, angerine? Uh, tangerine orange. <laughs> orangerine. <laughs> Get the new fruit, kids. <laughs> Call that out, mother. Uh, you're a bit orange, you light a bit of that and the fragrance... From it as or you toilet were, paper. Yeah, it's like yeah. A, it's fucking disgusting yeah. that side to it. I mean, as bad as Japan is in many ways, the English system of you churn a cell with somebody, he's you're there. Living no, the, live the toilet room, aren't you, basically? Uh, sorry, Sean, I'm fucking sat there having this shit listening right yeah. next to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. fucking yeah. disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a little curtain rail there. Sorry about this, mate. I mean, I, I would wait till they go to sleep. I was a bit yeah. embarrassed about the old thing. Fucking hold it Just in. Just all that awkward. Or wait till you get that hour out on the thing, you go yeah. then. Yeah, I think yeah. it's always the farting while you're shitting that's the most embarrassing. So in, in, Ameri <laughs> in America, there's no curtain or anything. You're just no, you're out in the open shitting. Oh, fuck me. Yeah. You know, in Japan, when the uh, especially when you're in the group uh, cell, the toilets there are fucking bang on. They're like a massive... Uh, I don't know. So you squat. So when you're squatting, yeah. like uh, many Asian style, it's a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. Right, so you squat and you press the uh, the button there. It's a massive flush. And it's just like squat, gone. See you later. Yeah. Uh, it feels like a lot better system. Really? How are we going on to this? I think wiping your ass with a piece of paper is a bizarre aware. system, isn't it? If you've got shit on your head, would you either wash it off with water and get a bit of paper and wipe it off? They have well, a bum, that'll do. A bum gun. <laughs> a a bum gun? A bum gun in uh, Asia. It's, it's basically it's a uh, sh uh, shooting water system that just cleans it all off. Oh, like a bee day, like a douche. Yeah, yeah a bee day, but it's a, a gun that you sh sh clean off. And you're allowed to have that in the prison? No, not in the Japanese prison, no. Okay. You actually got, every uh, month, you got so many uh, toilet papers. And what you had, you had to have in the corner, there's like a wooden thing where you, yeah. you put your uh, books and stuff. Yeah. But the side of it was uh, your toilet paper. I thought all Japanese were even mad for B days and all that kind of shit. Well, but they may be, but in the prison system, it, uh, it, it Toilet paper bad. ration, I was in Supermax. Yeah, you could like proper like And you hardly get any toilet paper, so you have to make an agreement with your cellmate. Well, you're like, like, bottom half, I'll second half. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you're pissing, are you going to stand up and piss 
which inevitably is going to splash yeah. Yeah, yeah. the rim and you're going to have to use toilet paper to wipe it up. Yeah, yeah. Sit down. Or on you're going to sit down yeah. and then you're going to have enough to wipe your fucking ass crack when you take a shit. That's sit what it, down and sit down. That's what it comes yeah. down to, well, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, Nice with... fucking toilet paper. <laughs> Considering how it's a fucking business over in America is people being in cells like and everything. You well, know that's it. it. The prisoners don't get any of the money. Yeah. The money gets, goes in the hands of the pocket, the, the contract. Yeah, the contract. And we don't get shit. I mean, that's slavery, isn't it? There was guys <laughs> coming in my cell asking for the Financial Times to wipe the rasses with at one point. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fucking bad, yeah. I honestly it? think it's one of the worst parts of the prison. The whole thing is that of the, the, the shitting, the sh- yeah, yeah, shitting, yeah. pissing, strip Did searches, you- foreskin searches. I didn't find that as as bad. You got a guy Peter gazing at your fucking cock with your skin pulled back. All the ones that did it never felt like. Imagine it. if he had a twitch. They, they all kind of went along with it. As in, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> the fucking <laughs> <area down there. laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned <laughs> epileptic fit in your back you know so you mentioned earlier Dan God's gone time to wank so in Arizona all sexual acts including masturbation including consensual sex with staff is a infraction of the inmate rules masturbation is including masturbation is it if you get caught wanking? What happens in Japan? It, it wasn't. It never come up. It weren't. He's <laughs> <laughs> had this. He's had this for a while. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> 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 We talked about this before, we talk about, talk about Freudian slip. <laughs> yeah, just a bit, yeah. <laughs> oh dear, that's fucking classic. That. I, did it. <laughs> I, asked, I asked the guys in the, the the guys were all grouped up together. So how do you go on for having a crafty one? Yeah. What would they do is because they had all these magazines. Pull, pull your chair forward a bit, so you're closer sorry, to the mic. Sorry, yeah. All right, oh. all right, all right. Knocking him uh, down. <laughs> So they would say, like, basically, I'm going for a wank. They go, all right. Yeah. They'll say, see my sen, excuse me. They go, see my sen. They get a magazine. They all go, yeah, no problem. In other words, because in that group of, like, uh, I think maybe 12 people, you had a cubicle kind of thing. It was like a proper toilet. Semi-open, say, like, they're in the studio with the, with the windows. You could see in if anybody's doing something fairly so basically the system was see my saying I'm off for a wank and they go yeah no problem and do, do, don't come now I'm going to knock one don't out don't come now <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was their system right and they did ask them like, how do you go on for that because you're you all you think one thing together. that encourages wanking only you like you know I mean fucking come on you know getting bagged up boys in the prison isn't a good idea but all, them, all them obvious <laughs> worries when if you've never been to prison before because I've never been to prison the obvious worry is they're bending over the this all game bum shit and you've seen Shawshank yeah, yeah. I could be a friend yeah, yeah of course yeah. but it's always in there and you think yeah, yeah you got a real yeah, pretty yeah. please 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 yeah. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, there was seriously none of that and I think probably when I went to Wandsworth were a bit more scared of that yeah they were uh, but I seen a lot of them they kept the, the boxer shorts on yeah and it was like quite open as in um, it didn't feel there was none of that vibe because it was a bit, little bit worry of it and all that I think it's um, mainly fucking overdone it through no, uh, in America you have, to go to a rape, you have to go to a rape class yeah. in American prisons. Well, teach you how to rape. <laughs> <laughs> right, boys, you've been raping all wrong. <laughs> now, great, after me, punch him in the face. <laughs> under, under the Prison Rape Elimination Act, everyone has to go to the rape class now to get taught how not to get raped. That's how oh, fucking. Shit. That's how much rape. I always think shit would be a good fucking way to put you oh, off. God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I had my own plans like that. If anything ever happened, yeah, oh, eyeballs and get shit, shit on them and everything oh. things like that. Yeah, yeah. that's fucking. Oh, that 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 would kind of put you off, wouldn't it? Right, first day. Don't. This is how not to get rid. I'm never fucking coming here again. <laughs> I think the uh, the American system looks way worse than the English and the Japanese. It just looks so cunty and horrible and yeah just uh all the mo- all the racism and all that shit oh yeah it's it looks that... it just looks fucking horrible yeah it's but tough. having to like 
Uh, I think what like Wildman, I think he did. A, had to kind of join to a certain extent. Yeah, these fucking yeah. Nazis go. Yeah, I'm one of you. Well, you've I'm got to Nazi survive, aren't you? Well. Yeah, it's that like survival yeah. thing. Well, Wildman, Wildman put so much work in. The the ABs offered him their tattoo, and that's that's like how much they respect yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he refused it. Yeah. Did he? I mean, yeah, yeah. He's like, I ain't fucking Nazi, blah, blah, blah. He'd just say anything. Yeah. And he actually refused. Oh, you must have some fucking, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's some fucking bad shit when you've got to do that. So yeah. what happens if you were like, just tried not to join anything, would you not survive? Do you know what I mean? Or- All right, so whatever race you are, you you must do what they say. You come under the control of that, of that gang. Right. So whites is the ABs, blacks the Mau Mau. Mexicans who are born in America, Mexican Americans, Chicanos, New Mexican Mafia, La M.A. You got the Pisces, Mexican Nationals, they've got their own gang. And um, as soon as you go in, you just labeled. They come up to you, the head of the gang or a torpedo from the gang, and says, Look, you're with us now. You sit at the table with us, you work out with us. They just lay it all down. Yeah. I was in there working out with this. Chicano gang member out of Tempe, La Victoria. And the uh, ABs come up to me and they're like, hey, Wood. Because Wood is like white boy. Right. Hey, Wood, look around the day room. I'm like, yeah? So what? Do you see any other white boys working out with the other races? I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh yeah, <that> <laughs> they're like, finish your workout. Don't let this happen again. You got a lot to learn, Wood. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I really, so I, I like was knows me. I don't know how would have to handle all that kind of shit. Yeah. I think I'd be a bit more stubbornly. Fuck off. I'm, yeah. I'm my own fucking man. Yeah. You lot jog on. Yeah. I, uh, I really do think I would be. Yeah, but then, but yeah, but then you. Know, I think you'd fucking soon quick realise if you couldn't be like that, you'd have to fucking do something. I don't know. I've seen that go both ways. Yeah, I really don't know how I'd have. I've seen that go both ways because when Wildman arrived at Buckeye Prison, he'd just been sentenced. He'd had a long day. They come up to him, charge check. Where's your paperwork? What you in for? He says, I've had a long day. I just want to have a rest. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, I've seen, like, I've seen this. Story. Like, yeah, like, don't you off. understand who we yeah, are? Yeah, we want to see it now. And he just knocks the guy out. <laughs> <laughs> but then they, they they checked on his background and offered him that guy's job. Fucking right. hell. Yeah. But that could have gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could have gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, it's, like, all, it's, that it's thing. all a tricky game. It's a tricky game, isn't it? Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. Because Wildman knew ABs from the Roman period, yeah. and it was that period that worked in his favour. They found out this is the guy we were in the jail with, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 and we know his background. But I like to think in, in the same way as like a wild man thought on his feet and he just kind of, yeah, some ways yeah. you're going with it. It's like, yeah, I'm not yeah. going to take any bullshit, but at the same time, you've got to go over the best angle at the moment. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So they had me reading their legal paperwork. So that was how I fit in. Yeah, yeah, Everyone has yeah. got a way of fitting in. Yeah, I'm yeah. not a tough guy. I'm yeah, just a business yeah. nerd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. They've got a right soft lad here. Get him to do all the letters from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. But that is that is what they do. Though, right? What's he good for? This cunt. And uh, what can I give for you to stop from you bumming me in the showers? <laughs> well, that's the sad thing. No matter how many times I dropped the soap in the shower, I never got lucky. <laughs> they said, oh, I dropped the soap. They said it was my hairy ass. They were like, ah, oh, damn, that's like a nest of tarantulas down there. <laughs> hey, boy. <laughs> Sean, don't start me arse thing. You'd be people making videos of you. <laughs> We know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh yeah, so we were on. Moving we, on. We, we took a little detour yeah. from the Mongolian who got out to help his pregnant missus. Oh, fucking hell, that really yeah, long yeah. Long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so I, I got moved to the other side. I think it was in the B-wing in Wandsworth. Yeah. And uh, next minute... Uh, the guy, we, we won't go into this other guy, but the guy me and Wals talked about before, a uh, guy that helped us out, um, he left. And I was like, uh, I had a couple of swaps with some dodgy bastards, like uh, th- a few things happened. But eventually I get moved. This guy came, he's an Asian guy, kind of Chinese-ish looking. Uh, and he's came in and, I, how, are you, how are you doing? Uh, 
I could tell straight away I thought this is a newbie, innocent kind of uh, guy. And uh, he was, I said, you know, where, where are you from? He said, Mongolia. I'm like, in Mongolia? I didn't <laughs> expect to be a Mongolian in a English prison. But strangely enough, in the Japanese, the, uh, the sumo, the top ranks in the sumo system are the Mongolians. Really? Yeah, there's like a three, four, maybe. I don't, but the, the, the top two guys were Mongolians. Uh, Asa Shuru, I could be getting that wrong with the name, but he was like the number one dude. He was a fucking beast of a man. Brilliant. And he'd just been fucked off as well because he, he was like a wild rogue of a guy. Uh, <coughs> Because the, the the sumo system is very, uh, um, what's the word for it? Fat. Um, fat, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as well as being fat, it's very uh, uh, history and uh, what's the, um, all, all the regiment, not a... Uh, yeah, it's a fucking word. I know what you mean. Like, traditional. Uh, traditional. Yeah. traditional. It's all traditional. <laughs> where you've got this big beast of a Mongolian guy who's come in, drinking, he's on the piss, uh, uh, smoking, doing whatever with the Yakuza guys. He's been caught in the newspapers and this and that, playing football, blah, blah, blah. He's got kicked out. So anyway, I meet this Mongolian and I said, oh, like Asashura, I know him. I've been in Japanese prison for the last two years. He's going, What? I know that's a sure. He, this guy knows him. He can't believe that I can know wow. a Japanese. I don't know him, but I know about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like going, really? I'm going, yeah, that's a sure. I'm going, this thing you did, like, it was just a... Oh, guys, Google Asashura, uh sumo wrestling. He was an unbelievable character. And uh, so, so this guy, um, he was getting... He was lost in the system. I'd found out... By at this point, I was like, I know what I'm doing here. I know I've been lost in the city. I've been found out that it's pretty fucked. My money had gone. All these things had happened. He, his wife was uh, pregnant. He, all it was just an illegal worker. Mm, sad. Yeah, he's he's got his family over, mm. and the genuine side of why people come to England for a better life. He's been caught out with his fake ID, or whatever. His wife uh, is just about to give birth. Mm. And he's keep on going to the screws, uh, officers. Sorry, sorry, Sam, officers. And uh, through this, uh, I could say he's completely lost. So I went right. No, and also, when we were having break time, the other, you know how people can see a victim and they want to get yeah. It's you know how it is. How people can just spot victims and people. And he was a victim. Yeah. So I was kind of going right. I go, listen, he's with me, mate. He's from Mongolia. He's a he's a sumo wrestler, aren't you? And I was making a joke. Yeah, yeah, Next yeah. minute, we're all laughing about. Uh, yeah. Is he? I thought it was like a Chinese. Uh, no, no, he's a, he's a big Mongolian. Don't fuck with them guys. <laughs> uh, you know, they're, they're this and that. Yeah, yeah. So we make it. So I really helped him out on the way. Uh, I got him through. For them to understand, his wife is just about to give birth. He needs to get the fuck out of this place. He's only in for a fake thing. Nobody knows what's going on. He's lost in the system. And then uh, and one of the uh, officers said, right, I'm with you. And then next minute, he went, right, says Steve. I said, I think I'm going. I'm going to go to court now. He said, oh, thank you very much. And uh, oh. he, But he's got in contact with me since. Oh. So he said, please come to uh, my... Uh, uh, Steve, my, uh, <laughs> guess who's coming in now, Steve? <laughs> fuck off! Surprise, surprise! <laughs> All the way from Mongolia, Steve. <laughs> I thought it was Samuel I saw. You know, one time I nearly got pissed up and uh, I nearly went to Manchester Airport. We got a one-way ticket to uh, Mongolia to find him. I had no idea. I remember you anything. fucking saying that. I, know. <laughs> I, thought, you know, I got you really pissed, pissed last night. I'm going to go to fuck off to Mongolia. <laughs> <laughs> so you and ex-con Steve boxing against the ties. Mm. So Steve is who I'm going on uh, the world adventure with. He's the one that's just packing everything up going, fuck it, let's buy a boat and fuck off around the world. When I first met Steve in Thailand, in about, let me guess, uh, 2003, I heard this guy was coming over to Thailand. So we're in a little bit of a click, kind of a, not a gang, but the, we're in a bit of a thing in Thailand going on. So we've got this uh, guy coming out of prison, uh, 
And uh, so he turns up, he's all fucking juice. He's been on the juice for God knows how long. He's, he's saying, uh, I want to have a fight with the ties. I've been training like fuck. And I'd already had a couple of fights with the ties, uh, boxing, like sober. And uh, we eventually, so I meet this guy. I'm quite wary of this uh, name and image that what's coming over. And I actually thought, oh, he's going to be a fucking knobhead. Uh, not a knobhead, but it was him and Baz came over. All right, yeah. So... I don't have you about, still got sorry? Have you still got those photos of you when you did the fighting town? Not from that one, but the a, boxing cer- one. A, a certain one. Yeah. But not we have no photographs of this. So it's me, another friend, uh, Jason Walsh. Give him a nod. No, Walsh. We end up drinking all day. I just met this character who I'm thinking is a bit of a not uh, what's the word for it? A, a character anyway. <laughs> round our way. I forgot his sound was full, this guy. I, I thought I'd be end up fighting with him, but it turned out we were all on the same level. Anyway, uh, so it's our mate, it's Jason Walsh's last night in Thailand. He's going, he said, uh, you, stay, you, uh, the other stay. He says, you're on about having a fight with the ties. It's my last night for a bit of a crack. Uh, why don't you two go go up against the tires for a bit of for a? Well, I'm going fuck. We've been drinking all day. Like, no, it's not that. I mean, I know, I know what he's like. No, you're not playing. You're not pulling this card on us. Anyway, he pulls the card on us. Next minute, he's talked to the organise organisation and all that. We're up there. So I says, right, listen. I'll do one round. I'll do a two minute round. I said, I can't do. Th- I haven't got three minutes in me. I'll do a two minute round for a bit of laugh. I talked to the the time box. I go, listen, like, you know, we've been drinking all day, and this, we'll have a bit of a laugh, and uh, and don't, like, yeah, yeah, okay, no problem for, right, okay, I'll do it, yeah. <laughs> Steve's on next after me. I gets in there, all sorts of, so there's me, Steve Walshy. The rest of the crowd, they're all Germans, like family, <laughs> families of Germans, and mixed like tourists. The guys up on the mic, uh, here we have. From England. <laughs> <laughs> From Thailand. He's a Thai. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, he's got, but it was all a bit of banter and a joke. Next minute, round one, I'm going, right, here we go. Straight away, I'm thinking, right, I've, I've probably got five or ten seconds in me of a few good punches. I'm drunk and I'm not, and uh, I'm thinking he's going to be messing. No, no, he's spinning around. Fucking clocking the shit out of me, <laughs> making me look a right fucking cunt. And uh, they're all going, you know, every time he's punching me, all the crowd, hey, hey. I think, you twat. But right, wait till it gets the last fucking 10 seconds. I'm going to fuck. It wasn't really hurting what he was doing. I'm thinking, right, any second now. In my brain, I forgot I was training three minutes. So, but I'd, I, I'd already shit out on the three minutes and gone for the two minutes. <laughs> In my bra- in my training brain, I completely forgot. I'm not even throwing a fucking punch. Next minute, I'm thinking, right, uh, ding, ba- they go, burn, burn. <laughs> what? He get the English guy. He didn't even throw up. I'm going, fucking hell. I'd agree to this, but my adrenaline was going by then. I'm thinking, right, he's made a rat twat to me. I'm going, right, one more round, one more round, one more round, one more round. Fuck off, <laughs> fucking one more. You get up. You get up. <laughs> <laughs> like big daddy <laughs> so uh they've gone oh, okay one more round done the same thing again anyway so I've got to the say the last minute I've got my opportunity he's giving all the fucking all the whatever on bang next minute he's, fu- he's on his ass I'm like <laughs> fuck <laughs> I've got him I'm about to jump. fuck <laughs> off <laughs> he's, he's getting back up like oh shit right right Bang, I banged him again. He's fucking back down. Fuck off, you Jamie. Go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, but they, I've only done two or three punches. I'm well out of breath. Just, oh. just calling them a load of cunts. I'm out of breath. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my god, he's getting up again. He's gonna twat me. <laughs> Four and forty. And uh, so he's he's getting up. I banjoed him as he's getting up. Then the referees jumped in. You can't do that. I fucking nuts. The net referee one. <laughs> <laughs> Once I've nutted the referee, so I've done that, I've nutted the referee, they've all jumped in, and they're staying there, Walsh, we've all jumped in, next minute it's all a fucking free-for-all. <laughs> in the- this isn't a real boxing ring, by the way, this is a- the entrance to a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> in Walking Street, uh, Patea, which a lot of people will know. <laughs> oh, and it went fucking nuts. And, uh, oh, I wish you had the video of that. But then uh, Steve, uh, he went in, he had a fucking mad round, they ended up uh, just, 
it was just chaos. What was the one that you said about the most knocked out fucking bloke you'd ever seen in your life? Somewhere? Was he a pissed up Swiss, Sweden, or something Fuck like that? Knows. Some big fucker you said, uh, you said Norwegian. It's a big, some big fucker you said he was the most knocked out fucker. You were pissing, shitting, fucking all sorts. Oh, no. I th- I presu- when you say piss, the first time we had a fight there, I was sober, completely sober. It was um, when we, we had this punching back in our house, didn't we? Yeah, that's I was right. like yeah, fucking yeah, training, yeah. Uh, really going for it. I thought it might have been the first time I went to Thailand. Possibly could have been. Because I thought when I go in there, I'll have a fight with the Thais for the crack. So we organised this fight and um, got there. And so there was a young English lad. He had all the band, uh, the, he was doing the kickboxing. I can't do that, that kickboxing and shit. I said, listen, we'll, we'll, we'll just do boxing. And uh, so this young lad saying to me, oh, what you want to do is this? And I'm going, all right, yeah, but this guy knows what he's talking about. So he's on before me. He goes in. He got a twat at that bad. He went down on one. He didn't even go. He went down on one knee, and he's just shitting himself and puking. Is <laughs> oh. like that? It, it was a, one of the most, was the most weirdest knockout I've seen. He went down on one knee, Fucking shitting hell. himself, puking. Back in the, mm. Wow. They, they, they literally dragged him out and going, right, you're next. Like, oh, fuck. I fucking sad. He knows what he, he was telling me what to fucking do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was funny. It was like you think, oh, this is pretty real. <laughs> and that, what happened? I twatted the fuck out of him. <laughs> yeah, it was only a little con, just fucking giving him. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, no, we did three, three rounds, and uh, yeah, it was good. I, he couldn't get anywhere near me. It was too small. You got and, the uh, reach. The, the gloves were massive. Yeah, no, yeah. And it wasn't completely serious. It was all, uh, you know, it was it's kind of playful. You don't know if they're even playing you. You know, he's letting you win. Yeah, yeah. So after we all had a few beers, yeah, you're well good, you aren't you? Yeah, yeah. You had me all over, really. Did I? So you who, don't know. Who knocked out former UFC world champion Michael Bisping? <laughs> he did. <laughs> what? Did yeah, he? I fuck, thought. I did. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that come about? Right, no, I, w- I want to tell you how about this story, why a lot of people said to me when I did the first podcast, why didn't you uh, tell you about where uh, you were... Uh, giving Bisbon one and all this it's quite a good story but the reason was I mean, me and Was talked about it didn't yeah, we yeah. I didn't want to come across as like a hard man of all these stories and law I really want to concentrate purely on the family side of the uh, Japanese experience I didn't want to give the full me which is a it's a lot bigger thing than me just being arrested in Japan and all that shit and so I did I was and you get quite a few people coming on the podcast giving the hard man story. It's like a kind of thing, I've been in prison, I'm hard as fuck, fuck it, all, all that. I didn't want to go down there. But I think if, because I knew Woz was coming here, he's somebody that knows this story is true as well. Yeah. So I'm more confident in telling the story without people calling me a bullshitter. It's coming out with fucking a lot of nonsense. So anyway. But it isn't what it that's seems a, That was anyway. a big build up to it. Uh... Right, what happened... I heard him talk about this thing that happened maybe six months ago. Online. I saw that, yeah. yeah. So this, this thing came out. His version of the story came out. Was this the video he sent me where he's fighting yeah. 20 people? 20 gypsies. Yeah. His story was he fought, he fought 20 gypsies. He got knocked out. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You can find it, find it online wherever the camera is. You can find it online, his version of it. It was very true, except for the end bit. All all this story was, up until the him getting knocked out bit, was true, from what I could see. He'd, he'd been in that many fights and this and that. He's probably... I don't think he's lying about it or trying to deny what's happening. But I I was uh, I was playing pool and I wasn't drinking. I was sober. I remember... Not your sensible uh, period, really. Yeah, I was in my sensible period. <laughs> I wasn't out, you know... Uh, listen, this is my sensible period. <laughs> and it was round about, was it 2001? I'm trying to work out the year. No, because no, you told me when I, I was living in Nottingham. So it'd be... It'd be, it'd be, it'd be... Before the World Cup 2002, yeah, I yeah. 100%. Cause that's when I broke up with her. That was the next period of, of life. Yeah, but I, I come back from Nottingham for, for a visit and you told me. So I think it's about 2000. 2000, 2001. Uh, right, so he, I, I, I'll tell you the fully how the story happened. I've been playing pool Thursday night, Clitheroe, the dog and partridge. Nice little pub. Quite a big, we were big on the pool and all that. Oppie, the landlord, he's an ex like um, bare knuckle fighter. 
he used to fight with the gypsies. This is where he's getting a bit mixed up. Oppie was a well-known hard cunt. And he was our, like, uh, pool team captain and all that shit. Proper good old-school guy. He was a fucking real character. And uh, so a skirmish has happened. I'm literally on the way home. This skirmish has happened. I could see uh, Oppie's son, Simon, he was, on the, he was the doorman there. It's all kicking off. Like, you know, right, so do we hang on here for uh, what's going on? They might need a bit of help. <clears throat> There's only like, uh, I think there was three of them, few of us. Next minute, it's all going fucking, uh, it's all going, you can see, you can see this there, uh, big, he's a big skinhead, he's a big character, he's very, uh, and uh, next minute, I think Oppie had uh, nutted him and then it all kind of went into a bit of a scrap. Simon, and his son, tried to pull him out. He's dragged him out. Um, Bisbon has fucking banjoed the fucking lot of them. <laughs> they're all, they're all, it's like fucking man down, man down. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, fucking hell, who's this cunt? <laughs> that, well, this is Because nobody knew who he was then. Not, yeah. you know, well, like, I, I didn't know who he was yeah. then. It was only until after people started talking about him. Because I think at that stage, he was uh, uh, like a kickboxing champion or... A certain level. It got to a certain level anyway, yeah. where they're all going, oh, he's fucking... At this point, he's just a guy in the pub who just looks mean and he's just kicked the fuck out of everyone. <laughs> and I'm going, shit. It's dragged out outside. I, the way he's carrying on. So Oppie and Simon, the two good mates of mine, I've just seen them get their ass fucking kicked by this fucking hard-looking fucker. They go outside in uh, the alley of the pub. Um... And I've gone, I'm going to have to fucking, I'm going to have to do somewhere here. So I've gone out straight up to have a fucking one-on-one -on -one with him, thinking I'll do, maybe he's had a few beers, I, I've got a good chance of a shot here. And amongst of all this, because... Uh, all the knocked out fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was down. But I'm still in fairly confident I can still do this con. But then, the same time, he's kind of come up me, as I'm like, in, like, you know, like an alpha, he's come out with this fucking... Absolutely perfect stance. Like, this cunt knows what he's fucking doing. This isn't just a drunken brawl. <laughs> I thought, well, in that split second, that there was a load of beer crates at the side of me, and I just thought, fuck that, he's having that. I grabbed all the beer crate and I fucking launched at him, twatted him, absolutely done, done him. He's completely down, absolutely out. Uh, then I actually did save him in some ways because a couple of the guys from the back of us Maybe it's foreseen what was going on. They got pool, uh, pool balls and things, started launching things at him. I just said, went, fuck. I was a bit annoyed, really, because I was the one going out, actually fucking manning up to the guy, even though I shitted out and manning up to him. But the other ones, uh, <laughs> well, do you know what I mean? Yeah, the choice, either do like, that or get oh, he's fucking down. <laughs> oh, let's, let's all jump on him when he's fucking down. I'm going, fucking, no, 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 no. You know, he actually legged it. He legged it off, and one of one of his shoe came off. I actually threw it at him. I actually went. I actually went shoe. <laughs> <laughs> and back to Cisco. Yeah. So he's fucked shoe. off. <laughs> and uh, so he's fucked off then. And this is what. And he will say it. He said, if you look at his YouTube thing, he said that's when uh, it really got a bit uh, crazy after that. Uh, which actually is nothing to do with me. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> Hey? Sorry, my neck. I said to crack my neck. So that has happened. <laughs> you right? He, he, he shot. He shot off. We're up, we're back in the the boozer, having a few people talking about it. People saying like, "Is this and that?" Da, 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 da. I go to go home, go in the car. Next minute, this is probably half an hour after. Him and his two mates are running down the road from from out here with with police cars coming. They pull them over and they're questioning them. I'm going on, I thought, do I get involved with this or not? I thought, well, at the end of the day, it's only a bit of a punch up, but uh, Simon and Oppie, they're pretty okay. Stitches and whatever, nobody's seriously hurt. So I goes over, I said, um, I said, listen, it was only a bit of a punch up. All the things that happened, I didn't realise. He'd gone, apparently, to a chippy fish and chip shop to the Americans, <laughs> um, kicked the fuck out of some other kickboxer, broke his leg in the chippy. After that. Right after that. He took it out that, on yeah. someone. That, yeah, exactly that. So he's got pulled over for that. I've gone to try and say, this thing that we've done isn't a, isn't a, it's not where, 
I've got one of his mates saying, we know who you are, we'll fucking do you. And I thought, I, thought, I said, fuck you, you cunt. I've come here to fucking stop you guys from spending the night in the cells, the, you know, the drunken cell, one night in the cells thing. That was my idea of that approach. I thought, oh, I can't be asked with it. They're all pissed. I can't be asked with it. Fucks off home. The week after, we were all talking about it in the pub and stuff. I'm fucking proper carrying at this point, thinking this guy, he's going to be after me after what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then it turns out uh, that night as well, people had gone into his flat, got a uh, Bisbon, um, tied him up, poured petrol over him, what? put a flame to him, said, fucking pack it in. And he's been on his hands and he's crying about it, saying, I won't do it, blah, blah, blah. Apparently, that was that was done. I think I'd do the same if somebody had poured fucking petrol over me. Yeah, we all would. <laughs> yeah. Talk about having a bad day. Yeah, 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 that's a bad day. And I will say, I know, Michael, you're going to be you're watching this at some point because his friends are friends. This is what I heard happen that night. I asked Oppie, did you guys do it? They all said it wasn't them. I presumed it was the Wigan bouncers. That, that These things have been going on with the Wigan bouncers. And uh, also, I, I'm not saying for a minute that I twatted you for any... I basically shit out. I knew he was going to do me. And I, I panicked, grabbed some I, I was. I felt really bad then. I did, never used yeah, a yeah. weapon before in my life. Yeah. Believe me, I can fucking fight. I knew I was going to get my ass kicked. And I fucking panicked. <laughs> I went, fuck, well, I'm done. Ooh, that's done the job. Well, that's what he said, because uh, I come back and he says, fuck it, you're not going to believe what I've done, right? And we didn't know who he was, just this lad. I said, I twatted him with a cray. The fuck are you twatted with a cray for? Was, he said, he fucking come out and he was fucking like this. Oh, fucking Wait, block, bitch, you cunt. You fuck. know what I mean? So, yeah, so it's, it's not like, you know what I mean? He's, <laughs> yeah, I watched like, that video of him. Know, he's know, he's know, got one fair, of those faces, doesn't he? That yeah, fair play. It doesn't matter what. Done. He's like one of our lads gone over yeah, to America. Exactly, full he's, respect he, for He's him, a world yeah. champion. Yeah, yeah, I, no, I, no, I really respect the guy. Absolutely. And I, I hope he doesn't come across, but I'm just giving me genuine, honest opinion of what happened yeah. although his story is different i'm not saying he's a liar i'm saying he he was scrapping that much he will get mixed up with the events yeah. but i think if he heard the story and like submit i go ah yeah no i do i think it, yeah it was like that I, you know maybe he wants to come back know. on and give his version of events well, we'll, we'll love to have him on his version was he got twatted by 20 gypsies like a friend of mine said uh he said, were you the landlord? I said, no, I was the 20 gypsies. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, okay. So last time that you did the podcast with us, you were still reeling from the loss of your sister. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, this is going to probably get a bit, uh, whatever. But the first time we did the podcast, the week before my sister died oh, of uh, MS, a long, long illness. And all the amongst all this joking aside, uh, like my mates and my family, they were so good through all that whole experience. And I wish I could have been more grateful for what they all did to me. Because anybody ends up in a prison for whatever reason it is, whatever the right or wrong, this and that, how much the family help help us and our friends help us. Believe me, none nobody let me down, not not one bit, and I'm so grateful. Because my sister died the week before the third, first podcast, I really didn't think I'd be able to like talk like this because I wouldn't have done. I was too emotionally... Uh, aware. That's why amongst a, a, lot, a lot of these stories have gone here, there and everywhere. I think in a more of a fun way. The first time we did it, my mind was very wary of not going to certain places because I thought I won't be able to speak. It'll just spoil the podcast and it'll be a bit... I don't know. You know what I mean? Well, you thought we were a bit fucked, weren't you? On it when you uh, all that, yeah. yeah. I was all dry. Yeah, <laughs> and, it, it was uh, a serious atmosphere. The first one. Yeah, yeah I was. I, that we probably should have left it a few weeks, but I was kind of. Just, I thought, no, we're doing it. We're on it. But uh, yeah, but that's that's the downside of why we all end up in prison. Same with you, like you know how much it affects our family. It's all a bit of a laugh and all that as we're laughing about it now, but seriously. Oh, tragedy plus time equals comedy, yeah. doesn't it? You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, that's, that's the truth yeah. of it all, isn't it? You know? well, that's an important message from these videos. It's not glamorising crime. It's like, no. you might think you're cool if you're getting into something. And 10 years down the road, when your mum's visiting you in prison, you're going to be thinking, what the fuck was I doing? What the fuck was I thinking? Look at the heartbreak I'm causing my mum and your family members and all that. Mm. Yeah. Definitely, it's fucking. I can imagine that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 
Yeah. Like I said, I was so fucking angry when I heard he got banged up. You know what I mean? Really was. Yeah. You know, because fucking, you know. Yeah. Can we oh. talk about getting bummed? <laughs> <laughs> Do you do that on your YouTube channel? What, bum? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, this is exactly what we do. We avoid that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Not fully avoid it. Bumming. But we're, 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 <laughs> no, we've got nothing against bumming. I'm completely open for good bumming. But, You're open for yeah, a good yeah, bumming. He's only got his ass against bumming. Can you get it up for a good bumming? <laughs> yeah. No, but we're all about the banter and having a laugh. And I think uh, hopefully people join us on this adventure because it is a big adventure what we're doing. Yeah. Was is going to be on the land side to where he's going to be doing the uh, what's the word uh, for it? Tutorial? Uh, not tutorial. Uh, no, no, the, the narratives over narrative, the videos. Yeah. Like we've got a lot to do. Like you know, like we've only been going, yeah. be going three weeks. We're really. What's yeah. the channel called? Uh, SESC Dogs. Do you know what you in the five? Me the first five members of it subscribers five, uh, subscribers yeah <laughs> it came up it was like five at Sean Atwood number five. I thought no oh, way. I, thought, I thought fair play to you yeah, yeah that's cool and yeah. it's just basically like when me and Steve used to go out at the pub and having a fucking crack and have a laugh and it had always infected every, we'd draw loads of people in do you know what I mean like yeah. we love talking to strangers because you get a different yeah we always take the piss you know out of each other and everything and any little tiny thing we have a crack we were on about uh, the uh Years ago, we came. We, we were working in Ireland. When we come back from Liverpool, we went, went in this in this pub. <laughs> we end up doing this like a mad Lauren Hardy act of uh, we getting, just, getting yeah. a cigarettes out and passing this thing. There were some you girls. We got talking to these girls, <laughs> and it's just like, "Have you got a light?" So yeah. So I oh, just hold that with you. So they hold that, and you got no. Can you just hold that? But yeah, you give me no. You and these girls are like, what the fuck are these doing? And we had a friend, I'm like, no. You just hold that. And there's these girls holding our live drinks, and we have got. Well, if you could just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we all do shit yeah. like that. So now you're live streaming all this. Madness. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just on the channel. Yeah, I've lived in it, and uh, but it's all about the adventure, the, what we're going to be doing. Yeah, and literally on June the first is the plan. That's committed. the plan. They haven't got a boat yet. But, <laughs> no, we've been looking at a boat. No, no, it's all right. all, yeah. We really are on it. Um, and yeah, me and Steve are going to be off on the boat, and there was and my son. We're going to be all part of the, like a YouTube channel and build up a community and just watch this adventure. Of where the fuck it could go? It's fucking it from could, Fleetwood. He could end up as Colombian <laughs> drug smugglers. <laughs> it, it, fuck knows where it could end up. But that's the fun about it. Somebody said, "Where are you going? How are you going to start? Fucking left and down." Mm. <laughs> so if you are watching this video and you want to join them on the adventure, the link to the YouTube channel is going to be in the description box. If you want to just go on one of their live streams and talk some shit to them and see what happens, I would urge you to do so. <laughs> it's just all shits and giggles. That's all it is. All it is. Cheers, everybody, and, and uh, thank you. Yeah. Let, let us know in the comments what you thought about this. Huge thank you for all the new subscribers. Subscription logo is in the bottom. And I will try to, like the first one, I really tried to answer to all the people saying nice shit or... Yeah. I really... Uh, Put me on my way to like, yeah, hey, nice one, thank you. Do you know how to join in? The, do you know how to join in the premiere? No. So this goes on premiere, and what that means is six o'clock on a Monday night and six o'clock six o'clock on a Thursday night we have our premieres. So it gets advertised, and people watch the premiere as it unfolds. I've seen that, yeah. And then there's like a live chat next to it. So in the chat, they're watching us. And they're all discussing what, what we're saying as... Oh, no, as, that, yeah. Yeah, that's a premiere. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, I've done... Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was in Barcelona watching when my son pissed up when, when, <laughs> the one we watched. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, were, you, were you watching the chat, the live chat? No, because I've just been in the casino and I won a load of money. Oh. So me and our dad, <laughs> he'd made a big stake. We got a load of wine. We were watching it. Yeah. And I said to him, I said, Danny, fucking follow the chat, will you? I don't know what's being said, <laughs> <laughs> but we're, just, we're eating steak and, and uh, fine wine. Yeah, well, the, the, the viewers would love you guys to join in the live chat on the program. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Sure, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 All right, so thank you for watching this video. Like I said, all the links are going to be in the description box the links for the YouTube, the socials, our socials, and everything else. And, you know, huge thank you for supporting what we're doing. Thank you very yeah. much, Sean. All right. It's been a lot of fun. Right. Awkward <laughs> cuddle, big hug off him. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Cheers, guys. It's been great. That. Cheers, Sean. Love to meet you thank you very Appreciate much. You. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Doodle pip and pop pop. <laughs> <laughs>